the countdown's still going. No, it says it's waiting for us. Welcome to Kensho Quest. I'm Heidi. Hi, I'm George. Good morning or good evening. Good wherever evening, you are. Wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to be answering questions about the Japan Rail Pass. But first, do you want to say a little bit about our family? Yeah, so uh, we are a long-term traveling family. We've been on the road for over 15 years now. Um, we spend a lot of our time in Japan and we also split it between uh, Thailand, Malaysia, and Vietnam. So we have a lot of content throughout Asia. So be sure to subscribe. We're going to start out here with some frequently asked questions about the JR Pass, and then once we get through those, we'll check the chat box and see what new questions you've added in there. So you've probably heard that prices of the JR Pass are about to increase by as much as 70% on October 1st, 2023. So that's why this is really timely to be addressing this right now. Sorry, we're having a slight te technical difficulty. Okay, there. okay, so here's the price chart. Did you want to go? Yeah, so this price chart gives you an idea of like what the current prices are now. As you can see, for a seven-day ordinary car, it costs $221 about that, and the price is going to go up to about $373. So as you can see, that's about 70%, and it's even higher if you are going to be going on a green car. So if you're going to be traveling within the next 90 days, this is the perfect time to be purchasing your JR Pass. Which brings us to this question, when do I need to pre-order my JR Pass to take advantage of the current prices? So if you want to purchase it, the best time is to do it, well, you definitely want to purchase it for September 29th. And the reason why is because that gives you the time frame to be able to use it within the next 90 days. <clears throat> so just to explain this, when you purchase a JR Pass online from a travel agent, you're given a 90-day window. So from date of purchase, you then have 90 days to swap your exchange order <laughs> that they send you in the mail for your actual JR Pass in Japan. So because of this, the latest anybody will actually be redeeming their JR Pass and picking it up in Japan who paid at the current prices is December 28th. So if you're going to be arriving in Japan by December 28th, you're within that time frame to take advantage of these current prices. Next up, why not purchase on September 30th? So technically, you can purchase up to September 30th. However, we do not recommend this. this is, it's just way too risky to do that for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, a lot of the agents who are selling the JR passes right now we, we found out that they're actually going to stop selling them a few days prior, so they might stop selling them by the 27th, just because they're so overbooked right now. And on top of that, if you were going to purchase it directly from the JR website, they are going to stop selling them on the 29th at, at Japan time at 11.30. So you need to give yourself some buffer room. And then things could happen, you know, like what if your flight is delayed or, you know, you get sick or something like that. You don't want to, to miss out, you know, of your window. We also have people from all over the world and just trying to convert those different time zones. You don't want to make a mistake and miss the window. So that's right. why we're saying by September 29th, if you're already within your 90 day window, I recommend go ahead and pre-order it today. It's only for those people who are traveling like late in December that you might want to push it back to the absolute last chance, which might be around the 29th. Okay, so how can I purchase my JR Pass online? We're going to talk about two options. Yeah, so the first way is through the official website. Let me. Sorry, we're going to try to pull that up here. Pull that up here so you so guys the official can see that. website, you have to just select it down here. Oh, sorry. The official website is japanrailpass.net. So this is the actual JR website, buying it directly from them. It's very confusing because there are so many websites out there that have a very similar name but it's japanrailpass.net is how you would purchase it directly through JR. So you want to talk about the yeah, pros and cons? We will link that in the description below if you want to click uh, purchase through them. So the main benefit of purchasing directly through the official site is if you need to reserve your seats now. So if you are going to be traveling in a crowded time, so and again, this has to be within the next 30 days, if, if you need to have your seats reserved, then purchase through the JR web website. However, now if you purchase through them, the, the biggest issue is that you need to travel within the next 30 days. It will only allow you to buy a JR Pass that you're going to pick up in Japan within the next 30 days. Yes. So if you're traveling in December, forget it. You do not want to purchase through them because you're going to be paying the higher price. 
And there's also a price difference, so it costs slightly more to buy directly through JR. Right now it's 4,000 yen. It's about 4,000 yen more uh, for, for adult. On This is an ordinary car ticket, so it depends on which one you're purchasing. So there's, there's definitely more benefits to purchase it from an agent. So, so what we recommend is purchasing it online through Kluke. It's an easy process. Their website translates into multiple languages. They also accept payment from multiple different methods. So when you're traveling to Japan, sometimes you might have issues with whether or not your credit card is accepted. I really like to use Kluke because I know my credit card payment will go through there. And they also have uh, really fast shipping and there's no, there's no extra charge for that. Let's move on. Our next slide, I think, addresses this. Um, so yes, uh, you can still... Wait. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. So uh, <laughs> we don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. So we have, can I purchase my JR Pass once I arrive in Japan? Now, just recently, because of COVID and everything, they were allowing people to purchase the JR Pass in person at a JR office. We've actually done this ourselves. However, one of the big updates is from October 1st on, no more purchasing the JR Pass in person at JR offices. So you only have through September 30th that you could actually purchase it in Japan. Okay. We had a question come in about somebody who's leaving within the next five days. We don't recommend ordering it online through Kluke if you're at that tight that you might miss getting your exchange order. So if you are arriving in Japan, going to be able to pick it up before the end of September, yes, you can do it in person. Going forward, October 1st on, no, you cannot get an exchange, you cannot get a JR Pass in Japan. And by the way, they've changed this to rule across the board, so any, any passes, any regional passes, no longer will be sold in Japan. It'll be online only starting from the 1st of October. Okay, so if I pre-order online from a travel agent, how quickly can I receive the exchange order? This is one reason that we recommend Kluke specifically, is because they offer free worldwide delivery of the exchange order within four to five days. It depends where you are in the world, but most places you can get it in four to five days. And it's also important that that is free delivery because some of the travel agents charge quite hefty delivery fee to mail you this paper exchange order. I know it's kind of archaic that you still have to get something paper and physical, you need a physical exchange order if you're buying through a travel agent. If you were to use that first option we mentioned of buying on the official website, they send like a digital email confirmation so you don't have to get something in the mail. But if you buy through an agent, you need to actually get this shipped. I think it came DHL to us. And so with Kluke, it's four to five days to receive it. Uh, just real quick, we, we got a lot of questions in the chat. We will get to them. Uh, we just want to get through some of these slides first. Okay, so when ordering the JR Pass on Kluke, what is meant by planned participation date? That is the date that you plan to depart to Japan. They need to know that for a couple reasons. They need to know it so that you can get your exchange order in time. And then also, depending on if you were to order a full 90 days in advance, they might not ship out your exchange order right away. They might ship it a little bit closer to your departure date. But when you fill in, specifically for JR Pass, planned participation date is the date of your flight heading to Japan. Now, do I need to include my full name when pre-ordering my JR Pass? Yes, you do. So when you, when you go in to order your JR Pass, it's going to ask for the, uh, the, the main person. And it's only going to have your first and the last name first. But later on, when you're filling out all the rest of the information, then you'll be able to enter middle names for people. Because you want to make sure that you enter the name as it is entered into your passport so they match exactly. Just like when you're going to fly internationally, you have to put it the same way. Yes, you want it to match because they will check your passport. Do I need to get a temporary visitor stamp in my passport to be able to redeem my JR Pass? Yes, absolutely. You absolutely must get this. All right. So, And, and they still call it a stamp, but the chances are it will actually be a sticker now that they'll put in your passport and you're going to get this when you go through immigration so as soon as you go through immigration if for some reason you do not get this go back and tell them hey i need this sticker because without that this is how they verify it when you go to the ticketing office this is how they know that you actually qualify because the jr pass is meant for tourists there is some little exceptions there like if you're japanese but you've been out of the country for 10 full years we don't usually get into those details this is meant for tourists so you need to prove you are a tourist does each member of my party need to be present with their passport when we pick up our JR passes? 
Yes, they should be. However, you know, uh, some people have said that, uh, you know, only one person gets in line. We even do that too. However, everybody should be present around the area because once you get up to the front, they're going to compare the passports and they may want to see the person's face to make sure that, you know, the correct person's getting the JR pass. So go in person to the JR office, bring your stamped passport, bring your exchange order. Or if you got it from the official website, then your confirmation. When I pick up my JR pass, can I make a series of seat reservations? Yes, in fact, so when you get to the JR office, this is your chance to ask any question that you have. You take your time, ask them questions, they are there to help you, and they will. So one really good tip is if you're unsure if you want to make a reservation, ask them about the train that you're going to take. So for instance, some trains such as if you are going from Tokyo up to Nagano, you're going to take the Hakata Express, and that Shinkansen, I believe, is... Uh, you said Express, is it? Yeah, well, you... The, the Shinkansen you're going to take in that region is reserved only, okay? And so if you don't know that, just ask and they will tell you. And the next thing you want to ask them is, how crowded is the train? So you can make sure you can get a seat. So in our case, we had never taken that route and they told us it's completely booked. The next train that we wanted to take, so we got on the next train and they were able to book seats for us. So if you're on the fence about whether or not to book seats, always ask how crowded is the train and they will be able to tell you, you know, if you should book a reserved seat or not. So when you arrive, if you already have your itinerary set, you know which trains you want to take, then that is a perfect opportunity when you pick up your pass to go ahead and book your seats. Yeah. If you're one of those, I'm just going to play it by ear, I'm just going to go where I want to go, and you're planning to go in unreserved cars, then don't worry, you don't have to make seat reservations then. If on a later day within your validity you decide, okay, I do want to reserve, you can always do it another day. It just means making that trip back to the office to yeah. do it. And one of the great things too is that with the JR Pass, if you reserve a seat and you miss your train, it's not a big deal. You can just get on the next train. You can either go try, go back into the office, or if you know how to use a machine, you can do it there. But the easiest way is just go into the ticketing office and say, hey, I missed my train. Can you get me on the next one? And they will, they'll book it for you. So, or if you want to just travel reserved, you can do that too. Unreserved. Unreserved, yes. Next, when I pick up my JR Pass and make reservations at the airport, is there likely to be English-speaking staff to help me? So definitely, if you're picking up at the airport, then yes, there's likely to be somebody who speaks English to help you. Also, at big train stations, there's sometimes two different offices. There's like the normal ticketing office, and then there's a travel services center, which is meant more for tourists. And so that one will have on the door a sign that says, like, pick up your JR Pass here. When you go there, yes, there will be people who speak English, and they will also have additional information and resources. You can do things like buy your PASMO passport or get your, um, what's it called, welcome Suica card there. So if, um, if there's more than one office, you go to the one that's meant for tourists, and yes, they can help you in English. If I purchase my JR Pass by September 29th, will I be able to ride the Nozomi? Okay, we may have confused some people on this. If you're new to the concept, right now the JR Pass does not include two of the bullet trains. It doesn't include Nozomi and it doesn't include the Mizuho. However, one of the updates is for passes purchased on October 1st and going forward from there, you can ride those two Shinkansens if you pay an additional fee. We haven't found really clear guidance or statement on this. Our belief is if you take advantage of the current prices, you don't get the new benefits. So if you bought it, your JR Pass at the current price, you're not going to get to ride the Nozomi. Also, there's some other benefits like discounts that will be in the new pass. I think you buy the current pass, you get the per current things included. If you buy the more expensive pass, you get the new benefits. But I just want to add to that too. Uh, if you are going to purchase after October 1st, if you want to ride the Nozomi or Mizuho, you are going to have to pay an additional fee on top of that. It starts at about 4,000 yen. Um, we'll link to uh, the, the price chart in the description below. But also, just so you know, that if, you're not, if, you, if you don't get to ride the Nozomi, it's no big deal. That train is exactly the same as the Hikari. It doesn't look any fancy or anything. The only main difference is that it will get to the destination faster because it has less stops. So the Hikari, in most cases, is just as good. Who needs to make a special seat reservation for oversized luggage? So if you have any piece of luggage that is larger than 160 centimeters length, width, and depth combined, then it is considered oversized, okay? Now, but let me back up a second. So this, this only applies if you are traveling in West Japan. So anywhere from Tokyo all the way down south to Fukuoka is considered the west area. So that'd be the Tokaido Shinkansen, you know, anywhere from Tokyo, Osaka, Hiroshima, any of those places all the way down to Fukuoka again, then you need to make a 
dedicated seat reservation if you have luggage that is over 160 centimeters length, width, and depth that's combined. combined Add right? it together. Yeah, and if it is over 250 centimeters, then it's not allowed. There are some, um, some exceptions to the rule to that, but those are uh, few. Now, if you can see this chart here on this page, you can see the seats. They're usually the back ones where you can store your luggage. And you can see there it says ordinary car and green car. These are the last seats of each train car. And um, if this is fully booked, you don't really need to worry about it too much because you can travel in unreserved and look for these seats as well. I want to say our base advice here is do whatever you can to not have oversized luggage. If you want to have an easy, carefree trip, even if it means instead of taking one really big suitcase, repacking into two smaller suitcases, it will be easier for you if you don't have really big luggage. Right. We're thinking, you know, 26 inch is about the maximum that you want to take. Yeah. yeah. And I also wanted to add that if you if you aren't able to reserve a seat again, get into the ordinary car. Okay, get into the unreserved. I, I mean, get into the unreserved car and look for the back seat. If the back seats are all taken, then take your luggage and put it in the seat in front of you. So don't do not put it in the overhead bin. That's where you're going to get busted for sure. Okay, and it's just dangerous. And it's there dangerous. is a fine if you yeah. have oversized luggage. What's the fine again? It, it's a thousand yen, so it's not a huge disaster if if you get fined. But again, I put the put the put your luggage right in front of you, and the chances are you'll be fine. Okay, let's move on. Is it hard to change reservations if I missed a train? This is one of the big advantages of having the JR Pass. If you booked a seat reservation, you missed your train, it's not a huge deal because you can just either get a new reservation at the ticketing office or you can just go in the next train that has an unreserved car. This is a big advantage versus if you bought an individual Shinkansen ticket for a reserved seat and you missed that train, you may have just lost $100 there. So this is one reason we really do recommend the JR Pass is We've missed our train before. You many, know? Time, many times. Yeah, and it's like no biggie. We'll just take the next train, either with a reserved seat that we need to go get the reservation for or unreserved. What if I miss a train and I have oversized luggage? Okay, I, I think I kind of uh, got ahead of myself and answered this question. So again, if, if you have oversized luggage and you missed your train, again, go to the ticketing office and tell them and they should be able to get you on the next train. As uh, long as there's availability. As long as there's availability availability and you know the JR they claim that they've allotted enough space based on usage that they have but again if if they cannot don't worry about it get into the unreserved car look for the back seat of each car to see if it's available if it is then great and, and if not then again put it in front of you in your seat yes it's going to take up your leg room but, but you don't want to be obstructing the walkway you don't want to be right. a nuisance to the other passengers yes. and again please do not put it in the overhead bin because it, it can be really dangerous if it falls those work best for like a carry-on sized suitcase is the JR pass at current prices worth it for my japan trip so we get different questions coming in i'm going on this route to here to here to here is it worth it just as a general example if you're going tokyo to kyoto and returning to tokyo then yes, we say the current price to JR Pass is worth it. Now, it may be slightly cheaper if you were to buy those Shinkansen tickets individually. However, with the JR Pass, you can also ride the local trains. You can use it to get into the city from the airport. So current prices, yes, that route is worth it. Yes, and you know, we got a couple of those questions actually in the chat. So if you definitely, if you're throwing in Osaka, then for sure, absolutely it's worth it. And you think about the convenience of it, the convenience of not having you know, to get in line to purchase a ticket or anything like that, that you can just, just get on any train is just If amazing. you're riding unreserved, you yes. just go get yeah. on the train. You just show up. And, and you know, the trains run until like 1130 at night. So there's there plenty of availability. We had a couple of people ask if they were going one direction. That's when it might not be worth it because if you're just going from Tokyo to the Kyoto area one direction, then probably just buy your ticket separately. But if you are returning to Tokyo, yes, current price. That's why it's been such a good deal for years. Yes, but also if you are going long distance to, and this is at the current price, okay? So if you're going to start, let's say, way up in Sapporo and Sapporo and work your way down to Tokyo and go all the way down, even just as far as Osaka, then it's worth it too. Because if you purchase those tickets separately, it adds up really quick. Because as soon as you get off the Shinkansen, you know, you're going to have to buy another ticket. And each of those segments can add up really quick. And again, if you're traveling reserved, 
uh, on, with the JR Pass, it's included. Whereas if you have to purchase them separately, if you want a ride reserve, you have to pay an additional fee. It starts at about 500 yen and goes up depending on the distance that you're traveling. We will link in the description box what's called the JR Fare Calculator, and you can go and plug in your own route, and it will total it up what it would cost if you bought individual reserved, reserved seat tickets for that route. Then you can look at that and see how that compares to the current prices or the new price, which is 50,000 yen for an ordinary seven-day pass, and you can see, okay, with the route I plugged in to the JR Fare Calculator, is it worth it to me? Because there's so many different scenarios. But now on to our next question is, will the JR Pass be worth it when purchasing at the new higher prices? Now, just simply going Tokyo to Kyoto and back to Tokyo, no, it will not be a money-saving thing for you. It can give you convenience, but financially, no, it's not really worth it. We've given an example in a couple of our videos. We have one that's a sample seven-day itinerary where it still would save you money at the new price of 50,000 yen. That example we have is going Tokyo to Kyoto, Osaka, down to Hiroshima, and then on your return, stopping at Himeji before going back to Tokyo. So that particular route, and of course if you add in any other farther distances or stopping more cities, then yes, you still save money, even at the new prices. So there are some people who will still be purchasing the JR Pass from October and onward. Again, this is just showing, you know, and green car prices are going way up. There's also different lengths, you know, there's the seven day, the 14 day, and the 21 day. We've given the tip in some of our videos that even if you're going to a 14 day trip to Japan, you might be fine with only the seven day JR pass. If you're gonna spend a bit of time in Tokyo, go use a seven day pass, come back to Tokyo. You know, you, especially at the new prices, you wanna get the shortest duration that you can use. So which local trains are included? Okay, so this is what pass. also really helps make the JR Pass worth it. If you're going to be spending a lot of time in the large cities like Tokyo, then take advantage of what's called the Yamanote Line. The Yamanote Line is a loop line. It goes in a circle, and it stops at, at most of the major places like Shibuya, Shinjuku, Ikebukuro, Tokyo Station, Asakusa. So these are all great locations. And you know, once you get there, then if you need to take another train, or you can just walk to a lot of destinations. So and again, that is included with the JR Pass. Take advantage of that, of using that. And it's also great if you get lost, just get on that train. It goes It'll in a circle. Go in a circle. You'll get there eventually. <laughs> You'll get where you need to go. So the same thing is in Osaka and also in Nagoya. They have something similar. The Osaka Loop train is also great. Stops at all the major places and included with the JR Pass. So I recommend booking your accommodations near one of those loop trains so that you can really take advantage of that included JR train. Now, if there's trains that are not part of the JR group, they are not covered by the pass. And then also subways are not covered by the pass. We have a video that explains everything that is covered. Okay. And for those non-covered ones, you can use something like an IC card. Okay, so one question that came in recently is about getting a refund. If you purchase through Kluke and then you want to cancel and get a refund before you've taken your exchange order and gotten your actual JR pass, you know, before your trip if you want to cancel, you can get a refund through Kluke, but they do charge a 10% cancellation fee. So we're going to change over. Do you see some of the questions? Yes. You want to add in uh, here? Let's see here. Okay, we're going to take a look at the chat box there. Okay. Hi, my name is Ross. I'm from Minnesota, and I am traveling to Japan this Saturday, September 23rd. Okay. In that case? Just wait until you get to Japan. Right now in September, yes, you can buy it at, like, at the airport JR office or one of the major train station JR offices. Just wait because you don't want to miss getting this and then you wasted all yeah. your money. So if you're still going to arrive within September and you're cutting it that close, go ahead and buy it once you arrive. Next. One thing we didn't address too is there's that 90 day window, but once you go and you exchange this and you get your actual JR pass, you can set the activation date to be anywhere within the next 30 days. So many people activate it immediately, then that way they can get from the airport into the city, but you don't have to. You have the 90 day window to pick up your JR pass. When you pick it up, you tell the person what day you want activation day to be, which is day one of using your pass. So that actually is an additional 30 day window. I know a lot of people aren't gonna be in Japan for a whole 30 days though. Okay, uh, this is from uh, Celeste. I will be traveling to Japan on no November 5th, uh, doing one way Tokyo to Kagochiko to Tokyo, I mean to Kyoto, Osaka day trips from Kyoto to Nara. Osaka and Kobe, so definitely for that trip, you know, the JR Pass is definitely going to be worth it. You're going to be able to use One it. One way, but... 
there's multiple. Yeah, even if you were going one way, the fact that you were going and stopping at all these places, it will it will it will be worth it. However, going to uh, to Kawaguchiko, you're probably not you're probably going to have to take like the Odaku line or some buses in that area that may not be covered. But some if if you look, so the one thing we forgot to mention is also make sure you have the Japan Travel app by NaviTime. It's super because it, you'll be able to select um, to search by what is included in the Japan Real Pass. Yeah, you click on route and then there's like tourist pass and there's a whole big list and you can select the Japan Rail Pass and then it will filter and show you only included trains. And I want to add in again, you can use that JR Fare calculator, put your exact route, it'll tell you how it compares buying the ticket separately versus the JR Pass. But keep in mind, if they're pretty close, you can make up the difference by using the pass on that local transportation. So even if you would save a tiny bit buying the tickets individually, it's not really worth the hassle if it's, if it's close. Okay, this next question is from Miao. Uh, I bought the regional pass, but when I bought it, it didn't, it didn't specify the region it was for. Interesting. Is there a way to check uh, where it's, this is done on the exchange boot? That's a really good question. I, I'm really surprised that it didn't make you specify which one. Can you give us more information on that? And I would say just contact exactly whoever you purchased that through. Yes. <laughs> to clarify with them. Right. Because there are so many regional passes that could have been any different thing. So I would contact who you bought it from, find out exactly what it is you bought. And then let us know. <laughs> let us know because that would be a good help for everyone. So, you know, we can make sure that doesn't happen. Going forward, we are going to be making a lot more videos about regional passes since in the future not as many people are going to want to buy this, what we're calling, what is the whole Japan JR Pass for all of Japan. If that's not financially worth it, more people are going to want regional passes and we will have videos coming on that. Okay, this next question is from Deepak. Arriving to Narita at Terminal 1 at 7.50 a.m., can you recommend where I can swap my order for the pass needed to head to, on a Shinkansen to, to, to Kyoto ASAP? You can do that right there at the airport. That would be the best place for you to do it. It'll definitely be open at 7.50 in the morning. They do, I believe they do have an office in Terminal 1. They definitely have one in 2 and 3, as that's where most of the international flights do arrive. Um, if you're having trouble uh, locating that, so what I would do is I would check the, the map, go to the Narita website, and check the location of where that JR office is, because it actually pins it on there for you. And most of these airports are set up so that once you arrive, you can pick up your pocket Wi-Fi, you can pick up your JR pass if you're shipping your luggage with hands-free Yamoto transport. They usually have those all together in one area, so you arrive and you can conveniently do what you need to do if you arrive in a time when it's open. Yes. So that's why we don't recommend arriving between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. because trains might not be running and these offices may be closed. And also, this is why we say give yourself a couple days wiggle room as far as when you buy your pass and when you plan to redeem it because your flight could be delayed. Like for somebody who says they're gonna arrive at like say 8 or 9 p.m. at night, and then what if your flight is delayed? And what if by the time you get through everything and you get to the JR office, it's closed already? So please, when you're buying your pass, you know, count the date of purchase, count the date of redemption, and also leave wiggle room for things that can happen. I just want to add to that again also is when you're in the airport, that office is going to be near the train terminal. So when you go through, there's going to be an area where it separates from bus and also for the trains. Go ahead towards the trains and then the office will be near there for sure. Okay, let's see. Also, if you're not joining us live here, if you watch this as a replay later, you can leave your questions in the comments under the video. We always do try to read all the comments and reply to as many of them as we can. There are three members in my family. I'm guessing I need to purchase JR passes for everyone. Yes, absolutely. If you want to ride um, on the Shinkansen or if you want to ride on the trains that are including the JR Pass, then as long as the members of your family are over the age of six, then you absolutely need to purchase Six them. or over. Six or over. So if you have kids that are like a baby all the way through five years old, you can have up to two kids, five and under, riding for free with a, an adult who has the JR Pass. So for us, like our two-year-old can ride for free, our five-year-old can ride for free, but any kids six and up need their own JR Pass. The child's passes for 6 to 11 years old cost half as much as the adult passes do. Okay, this next question is from Melvin. If you order through Kluke on September 28th, is it guaranteed that it will be processed on the 28th? 
The answer to that is no, it's not guaranteed. However, they do ship it out pretty quickly. So I guess the big, I'm gonna throw a question back to you is, is when do you need it? Like when are you going to Japan? So as long as you have time, you know, to receive that, it, it gets there pretty quickly. And we've been back and forth with people at Kluk. We have contacts there and they've been telling us, you know, you can tell people they can buy it on the 29th. There were some in-person travel agent offices that said, you know, they might stop selling it on the 27th, but Kluk is planning to sell it online right up through the end. I mean, yeah. I suppose the 30th they're planning right. to. I just, I just worry because time zone conversions, like I wouldn't want to tell somebody you can buy it on the 30th and then maybe if the time zone conversion wasn't right, you might've missed it. Yeah, so really the only instance where you would want to purchase it on the 30th is if you were stretching it to the last day. If you like you're need arriving that absolute December 28th, you know? Yeah. But if you can plan your trip to arrive the earlier in December, that would be better. And if you're in your 90 day window, just go ahead and get it today. You know, there's no sense in waiting super late on it. Again, you can refund if you haven't yet picked up your JR Pass, but there is a 10% cancellation fee. And if you haven't already watched our other videos, we have one on how to buy and use the JR Pass. We have a beginner's guide to the JR Pass. We have advanced pro tips to the JR Pass. So if you're new here, if you haven't been following us for a long time, we have a whole playlist of videos where we've addressed a lot of this before. Okay, next question is from James. Do, you, do we know the discounts included with the pass? Currently we do not. We are waiting for word on that. I have a feeling that they're not going to let us know until the 1st of October. So if you're not familiar with this, the new higher price JR Pass, one of the perks they're trying to promote with this is you will get discounts at different tourist locations. Yeah, I think not until that's actually released in October are they going to release the details yes. of what those perks are. The only so-called perk is the <laughs> being able to ride the Nozomi and the Mizuho, which costs extra. And with, with an additional fee. Yes, so hopefully there will be more. So basically it's more expensive, but you don't know if you're getting a whole lot more for it. It was an amazing deal for years. It was really a great savings at the current prices. Okay, this next uh, question is from City Channel. It is my first time traveling to Japan. You said we could board the train after we missed our reserved seat and we will still have, have to book. Is it because someone will check if we have the ticket? Okay. Okay, so, okay. sorry. No, go ahead. If you missed a reserved seat, you have two options. You can go to the ticketing office or the ticketing machine and make a new reservation and then wait for the train that your new reservation is for. Or if you're riding a train that has both reserved and unreserved cars, you could just get into the unreserved car. But yes, anytime you're going to go in a reserved car, somebody asked us about this for green car as well. Like if you have a green JR Pass, which allows you to ride in the first class green cars, if it's a reserved car, you always need to have made a seat reservation. You don't get into a reserved car, unless it's on accident, <laughs> without a seat reservation. And that brings me also to the difference between an ordinary JR Pass, which is what we pretty much talk about on this channel, and a green JR Pass. With the ordinary pass, you can only ride in ordinary cars. So there are both reserved ordinary cars and unreserved cars. Now, if you buy the more expensive JR Pass, which is about to get much more expensive, the green one, you can ride in the green cars, which are considered first class cars, and they are completely 100% reserved seat cars, or you can ride in any of the ordinary cars. If you want to go in one of the reserved ordinary cars, you still need to make a reservation, or you can go unreserved. So you've got green car, you've got green JR Pass, you can use whatever trains are included. If you have ordinary, then you can use either reserved seat car or unreserved. Yeah. And I just wanted to add, if you do have a reserved seat and you miss your train, if you have time, please go to the office and let them know so that they can free up that seat. Because now that seat is, is reserved uh, and there's nobody on it. Because somebody might be planning to get on the train at a later stop. And so they block it off like, okay, somebody's in the seat for this segment. If they get off the train here, somebody else can use the seat for this next segment. If they get off, somebody else can use it for this segment. So yeah, you do want to let them know and don't intentionally <laughs> miss your trains, don't think, oh, I got a JR Pass, I can just miss it. It's like, get to the train station at least an hour in advance, give yourself time. Some of these train stations 
you will be walking for a long time. And for us, we like to stop and get snacks at a market or bento boxes. We like to let our kids use the toilet before we get on the train. There are toilets on the train as well, but it takes a while to navigate. And then once you get onto your platform, you could be walking a good another distance trying to get to the right spot where your car of the train you need to be standing either where the unreserved car is going to stop if you're riding unreserved or if you're riding with a seat reservation it's for a specific car of the train so you need to get to the part of the platform where you're waiting for your car this all takes time so plan accordingly you know if it's your first time maybe get there plenty early so you arrive to your platform on time and don't miss your train also the train's going to leave on time so don't expect you have any wiggle room. You need to be waiting on the platform before the departure time in order to make your train. And when you're traveling reserved, you will get a reserved ticket. Now, in, on the express train, not on the, Shinkan, not on the bullet trains, but on the, on the express trains, there may be a place on the, your seat to put that in there. Otherwise, you just hold on to that ticket. And when the attendant walks by, they may ask you for it. It's a rare thing. But usually, what, they're just checking. They know which seats are reserved. And if you're sitting in somebody else's seat, they're going to tell you to move. Yeah, basically, well, the, the person who's seated is might tell you. The attendant has a little electronic device and it shows all the seats that have been reserved. So if you think, oh, I'll just spread out and take an extra seat and you're sitting in a seat that nobody's reserved, they're gonna call you on it and be like, may I please see your ticket? Also, if you sit down, you think you're in the right seat and somebody comes along and they say, this is my seat. We've done this before because we were in the wrong car of the train in the seat number and then so that's really what those seat reservation tickets are for is to like prove if you're in the right seat or not so sometimes you can end up with you'll have your little jr pass that looks like a ticket it can be fed through the automatic ticket gate you're also going to have your seat reservation ticket which you don't normally need to do anything with i just like keep it in my purse it's proof that we're allowed to be sitting where we're sitting okay next is from celeste if traveling one way from tokyo kyoto to osaka is the jr pass worth it it might not be worth it at that point. You can go ahead and add up what that would cost. I usually go on Kluke, and Kluke also sells just individual Shinkansen tickets, and they make it super easy because you just plug in your departure city and your arrival city. It shows you how much the ticket costs. If you're going one way, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna save money yeah. with the JR Pass. Unless you're gonna be doing a lot of inner city. So for instance, yeah. once you get to, to Kyoto and you're gonna to go to Osaka, a lot of people will go back and forth between Osaka and Kyoto a lot, because it's only a 12 minute ride on the Shinkansen between those two. So you can just be located in one city and go to each one every day. And if you're gonna you know, hang out in Nara too, then yes, it, it might be. So you're gonna to wanna to maybe use the calculator and add that up. Again, we'll put a link to the JR calculator where you can calculate this. And also where you can check those individual tickets because going forward, more and more people will be just purchasing separately Shinkansen tickets instead of using the pass. So. This next question is from Ray. Uh, if the JR pass is going up, does it mean the actual train ride tickets are going up as well? I am doing the golden route, Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, and back to Tokyo. Okay, well, first of all, with that route and the current prices, you would save money by getting the pass. But what is going up is the whole Japan Rail Pass, and multiple of the regional passes are going up, but they are much smaller, like, Increments. increase Very of much, what they're yeah. going up. So those regional passes may be going up, but not by a whole lot. The Hokuriku Arch Pass, which is a good alternative to the JR Pass that we'll talk about more, that one is not currently going up, but it'll go up in the future. Now, we haven't heard anything about individual Shinkansen tickets going up. Yeah. My guess is that's not going to happen, and, and the reason why is, you know, the main reason why, the, we believe the main reason why the prices are even going up, I, I could be completely wrong here, so I'm, I'm just throwing out my reasoning why I, I think it is, is because they don't want people taking the gold round. There are too many people going Tokyo to Kyoto with this exceptional deal of the JR Pass, and they are clogging the trains, this is why we were kept off the Nozomi and the Mizuho. <laughs> There are regular people who live in Japan who need to use these trains. Every, they're using it every day, yeah. So if they are just swarmed by tourists who are getting this super good deal, I think they're actually trying to decrease the amount of people who are going that route directly from Tokyo to Kyoto. And we'll talk more later about the Hokuriku Arch Pass, but it makes an arch from Tokyo up to Kanazawa and then back down to Kyoto with some beautiful scenery along the way. So you still get from Tokyo and end up in Kyoto, but you're not going that direct route from Tokyo state straight to Kyoto, which is what they're trying to reduce the number of people on that direct route. That, we don't have time, I think, to talk about that today. We'll, we'll be making episodes specifically about the Hokuriku Arch Pass because once the prices go up, we do believe that this is going to be a great alternative for people to explore Japan and see places that most people don't ever see. 
yeah, we'll be making more videos about these alternatives once the prices go higher. This is from Kichi. We will be staying in Tokyo and Nozawa Onsen in January. We plan to use local trains in, in Tokyo and some express trains as we go to Matsumoto and maybe one Shinkansen trip back. Is the JR Pass worth it? Mm. It depends what that one Shinkansen trip back is, but probably not with yeah. that kind of itinerary. You can just check, like I go on Cloak, I see what the price of the individual Shinkansen tickets are, and it's pretty easy to purchase those individual tickets with an itinerary like that, you probably just want to buy your Shinkansen ticket. Yeah, because for where you're going, a lot of these trains are not going to be included with the JR Pass. Uh, they might not be JR right. trains. Yeah, exactly. So, but I mean, you're going to love your trip. These are some amazing places. Matsumoto is just an amazing, amazing place that is just, you know, it's one of those hidden gems that we highly recommend. And if you're going to go see the castle, especially, amazing. It's the, it's the best castle in Japan. <laughs> Even the Hokuriku Arch Pass won't get you to Matsumoto. Right. Like it's outside of the range. Right. right. Yeah. Also, people who are going Tokyo to Hakone, um, that's not all JR that route either. So we have a separate guide to the Hakone Free Pass. If you just want to take like a day trip from Tokyo over to Hakone, you can use that pass instead. Next question is from Lisan. How long before should I reserve my oversized luggage in green car? I would just do it as soon as you can. As soon as possible. So, so if you've bought through the official website, that gives you the advantage of being able to go ahead and make reservations online through that site right away. If you're buying through Kluke and you're getting your exchange order, as soon as you redeem that exchange order for your JR Pass, right then and there, you could go ahead yeah. and make the reservations. Because if you have oversized luggage, that's just like the extra tricky adding something into the mix. Because what if all those seats book up? You know, you don't have as many seats available to you with exactly. like oversized luggage. Exactly. So really the best time to do this is when you redeem your exchange order for your, your JR Pass. Just, just get it all done if you can, if possible. You should just have your route all written out exactly which days and around what time you want to be going from city to city. I know people have expressed some people are just going to play it by ear, but keep in mind you will have booked hotels. So you kind of can't really play it by ear unless you're just going to show up to a hotel without a reservation. You pretty much need to know which days you're traveling from one city to the next. Yeah. And, and again, regarding the oversized luggage, it only applies to West Japan from Tokyo on down south to Fukuoka. If you're going north to Hokkaido, no worries. If you're going to Hokuriku Arch Pass, no worries as well. You do not need to reserve. But it's not going to be fun to have huge heavy right. luggage. It's not going to be fun. Like, most times there are elevators mm -hmm. in the major train stations. Sometimes you have to go roundabout, it's going to take you longer to get the, that elevator. And if you ever have to use the subway, the subways often do not have an elevator, or at least it's not anywhere nearby. So imagine carrying that suitcase up a whole bunch of stairs. And then depending where you're staying, if your hotel is right near the station, or if you have to walk a bit to an Airbnb, are you going to be able to drag that? Because we pack as light as we can, and it's still too heavy. <laughs> Okay, next question. I want to buy a JR Pass for my mid-October trip. I also want to book reserved seat tickets on Shinkansen for during that trip. Can I reserve weeks before activating the pass? Okay, so <laughs> activating, redeeming are two separate things. If you buy it on the official website, japanrailpass.net, right away you can go ahead and make those reservations online. If you buy it through an agent like Kluke, you will have to wait until you redeem it in Japan which is different than activate because the day you redeem it, you have a window that you can set activation up to 30 <coughs> days in advance. It's people like us who travel long term that may be like doing a whole 30 days in advance. If you're on a short seven day trip to Japan, you're probably activating it immediately. But yeah, you want to book right away, then you can, it sounds like for those dates they said October, right? You'd be able yes. to buy it on the official japanrailpass.net because you're yes. within the 30 days. Well, until the 28th until the 20th of October. So if you're within that region, yes, just purchase it from the official site and then you can reserve those right now and have peace of mind. We really normally recommend like during super busy seasons when the train might book up to use the official website. Now everything's kind of up and changed because yeah. of this price increase. Right. But you know what, as far as traveling on the trains, a lot of people are concerned about, you know, luggage space and having reserved. It can happen that you might have to stand on a train, but usually if that does happen, it's usually for a short period of time because what happens is the train will fill up with commuters usually, unless, unless you're traveling during holiday season. So it usually fills up with commuters and they get off and then, you know, seats open up. 
So, so try not to travel during rush hour in the evening. But for us, like our last seven day JR pass, we reserved one train. We reserved our very first train we were taking. And then we rode unreserved. Like we tried to make another reservation and we just ended up getting on. Yeah, we're just like, ah, it's so it too did much hassle. So we like a seven day pass almost completely unreserved with three young kids yeah. in tow. And you know, sometimes you don't get a seat, but it's not a huge deal. Like I think a lot of tourists think you have to have a seat reservation. I guess if you're really, really opposed to standing on yeah. a train, that's when it matters to have a seat reservation. But you know, I, I, in the last 10 years, of us taking the pass, it's happened one time where we had to stand one time, and it was during rush hour. And it's more. And it was often, only me. <laughs> yeah, it's more often been on like express trains, so yes. not the bullet trains. Express trains during rush hour. I know. I think you stood for two or three yeah, hours. Yeah, sometimes. Then. Yeah. But with the bullet trains, we've usually been fine, even in unreserved. Yeah. So uh, regarding that, if you if you are going to be traveling during rush hour, and this is anywhere, and if you have a choice between t taking a cheaper local train or paying a little bit more and, and riding an express train, I say 100% pay a little more and ride their express train. And, and the reason why- And if you have the passes included anyways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but if you ride the express train, you can reserve a seat, you know? And you won't have to stand, because I had, I stood one time for three hours on a local train, because, you know, because we didn't book a reserved uh, express train. And it's, you know, people are often nice and will let like, when young kids have their seats <laughs> or maybe women sit down so usually me and the kids were lucky that somebody would um stand up and let us take their seats but. okay um we keep rambling there so let's see and just try to be polite on the trains you know try not to block the way try not to speak too loudly if you see somebody come in and they're elderly or they're disabled or they're pregnant if you're in unreserved you haven't booked that seat, you know, think about giving up your seat. Also, the really local trains, like you're just getting around the city, there are special seats for people who are disabled, pregnant, or have a baby with them. But even if it's a regular seat and you see somebody like that come in, it is the polite thing to do on just a regular local train to get up and give somebody else your seat. Yeah, and the reason why, because in Japan, a lot of people will not give up their seat, which seems kind of crazy for a very polite culture, but they're sleeping. They're sleeping and they, they don't want to be bothered. They're so, so tired right. coming home from work or coming home from school that they're like asleep in their seats. <laughs> and it's mostly guys, so shame on them, I say. <laughs> okay, fine. Anyways, okay. Um, can I purchase a seven day pass on September 30th with my time zone and activate it when I arrive on the 29th of December, but wish Not to 29th. use it on January 6th? Not 29th, Not 29th of 29th. December, you're already 28th. over. And 20, 28th of December is really, really yeah. last minute. Like we said, technically you can purchase through an agent like Kluk on the 30th, but even that, like what if you got the time zone thing wrong? I just, it makes me nervous. And 29th yeah. of December, no, you've, you've missed the boat there. Because when you count that 90 days, you must count the day you purchased and you must count the day you're redeeming. And you must think also, what if the office is closed when yes. I arrive and try to redeem it? You don't want to be out like all your money you spent on the pass. So if you can change your day to the 28th, I would, because you're going to save a lot of to money. Like an early flight, yeah. a flight arriving yeah. early on December 28th, so, not late. Right. And then if you can make it on the 28th, then absolutely you can, re, uh, you can have it activated on the, on the 6th of January. Yeah, the activation is no problem. The 28th thing, count and double count your dates. Like I don't want anybody to rely on us. I actually count on the calendar because he uses online like calculator things sometimes and sometimes the online calculator doesn't account for both the first day and the last day. Everything needs to be within that 90 day yeah. window. Yeah, so we, we learned our lesson. <laughs> so basically we always maximum, if, if there's a 90 day window, maximum 90, 85. We give ourselves buffer room just because things can happen. What if you get sick? What if the flight's delayed? Then you miss getting to the office. Yes. Okay. If we land in Tokyo on January 10th, 2024, is there no way at all to get the JR Pass at the current price? Sorry. Sorry. No, you're yeah. already out of the window. So again, you want to see, is your route worth it for the JR Pass? Like you're doing a whole loop going down as far as Hiroshima or farther to Fukuoka. If not, it's okay. It is okay to just buy individual Shinkansen tickets if that's better for you. The JR Pass made things really easy for tourists, but it's not a necessity. You're right. And we're going to be making separate videos on how to purchase them on two different websites. That would be the Smart EX and Kluke. They're both really good at purchasing tickets individually. Those will be coming soon. All right. Uh, 
Uh, we, I, we have already answered this. Yes, individual, are individual ticket prices going up as well or just the JR Pass? Again, it's just the JR Pass and the regional passes. Um, those are going up incrementally over time, so um, probably all of the regional passes will go up as well, but those are small amounts, like three, 4,000 yen compared to you know, 120,000 or 130,000 yen. Yeah, so you're fine if you're just trying to book individual Shinkansen tickets. Okay, good question. Um, Follow-up question on avoiding oversized luggage. I've seen you use shipping companies, do you use air tags or anything to track your luggage out of paranoia? Yes, <laughs> because I watch YouTube videos and they tell me what to do. I put a little piece of paper inside our luggage with our contact information, like our phone number, email address. I put an air tag in each of our luggage. And then we really do trust Yamoto Transport, which is called Koroneko, Black Cat for their service. We've used it so many times. It's in Japan. They do a really good job. Like one time they taped up the wheels of our suitcase so nothing will get broken. And they do provide some kind of tracking, right? Yes, you can track it on their website as well. Um, but having the air tags is fantastic because then you really know when it gets there. I use it just for fun just for because fun. often yeah. we'll kind of send our suitcases ahead. Like if we know we're staying in Tokyo for a few days in a tiny cramped hotel room and we don't want to have our suitcases there, then we'll kind of send it ahead to our next destination. So for fun, I check on my phone, I find my app, I see, okay, they've already reached <coughs> the destination city, they're waiting there, they'll be delivered once we get there. But they do have tracking, I mean, I totally trust Yamoto Transport, and there's also Sagawa. Yeah. Sagawa is also really good too. So if you don't see Yamoto Transport, but you see Sagawa, they're just as good. If you're in the airport, it's often labeled hands-free travel. Also, most hotels, they can like fill out the forms for you if you ask to have your luggage shipped. So when you arrive at the airport, you could have it shipped to your hotel. Um, you could even sign up for round trip so that it will go to your hotel and back to the airport. Um, if you're doing a multi-city trip, you can have it shipped ahead to the next city. The main caveat with this is when you're going back to the airport, they want like two full days from when you have your luggage picked up. Like they'll come to your hotel and pick up your luggage. They'll need a couple days for it to ship back to the airport to make it arrive on time. Often if you're just like having it go to your hotel, it might be there that day Usually, or the next day. Yeah. So, you know, even though they... The issue is with the airports. They don't want it on them, you know? If so, it missed your flight. Like, yeah. imagine you come and your suitcase didn't come in time for your flight. So that's why they really want that buffer zone. And the way I pack our family, especially if we're going on a JR Pass adventure, is I pack some carry-on bags and our backpacks with the things that we really have to have with us. So, you know, our clothes, our toiletries. Of course, we have things like our electronics and our backpacks. Those will always stay with us. And I pack one suitcase for the family that we will ship and we're okay with not having it for one, two, or three days because we're shipping that one around. So make sure you keep with you the things that you're really going to need to have access to every single day. If you have medication or something like that, keep that on you. But we've had good experience with shipping our luggage. Absolutely, and we highly recommend it, especially if you have heavy luggage or oversized and you just don't want to deal with it, just ship it. And by the way, also, I don't think we ever mentioned this before, but if you are staying like an Airbnb or stuff, you know, a lot of places aren't going to let you send it to them. However, what you can do instead is when you go to the Yamato Transport office, is just tell them you want to ship it to the nearest office of where you're staying. And that's okay, too. You can do that. And by the way, when you do that, you can also leave it there for a few days. This is like a little known, you know, unknown hack, but they don't mind if you have it shipped there and it stays for a maximum of seven days. Yeah, it has to be within like a week. Yeah. But so if you're at Airbnb, because sometimes the host doesn't want you receiving right. anything. Especially in Japan. At the Airbnb. And also if you're doing like your monthly transport, you need to be present to receive your luggage or your package. So yeah, you can have it sent to another Yamoto transport office there are quite a few of them we look it up on google maps they're and everywhere always yes. found them like a couple blocks away from our airbnb to be able to use the offices yeah. so if you're saying hotels so much no easier problem. the hotel yes. staff can just like yeah. we've shown up to our hotel and our suitcases are just waiting for us in our hotel room already yeah super nice and also the, one of the really good things about the hotel is too is that almost every single hotel has yamato ready in in the hotel you just tell them i, I need to ship yamato and they're going to whip out the paperwork and chances they're going to fill it out for you so, so take advantage a little bit of that easier yes. than you have to fill in like Absolutely. you know you can choose delivery date when you want your um luggage delivered where you're having it sent to uh I, i'm watching this now will this interview be available to watch later to get all the details absolutely it will yes. be on the channel and even afterwards if you're watching this afterwards you can still leave comments below and questions and we will answer them
and we have a whole playlist that's a guide to the Japan Rail Pass. So this is one in many videos we've made, all the way from the most beginner to advanced tips for using the JR Pass. Okay, here's a good question. With a new Pasmo and Suica, can I get my deposit back, or do I have to spend it all at the end of the trip? So right now, as you may know, you, you actually cannot get a regular Pasmo or Suica car due to the, uh, you know, the, 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 chip shortage. the chip shortage. However, what you want to do is when you arrive at the airport, because this is probably the only place you can still get a Suica or Pasmo, is get one. You, you can either get a, a welcome Suica card or a Pasmo passport. Now, they're, they're exactly the same. You know, they, they function exactly the same. They're just by different companies. Um, and you do not have to pay a deposit on these. Okay? But you don't get your balance exactly. refunded at the end the way you would with a regular Suica card. So our tip is just use it up. Use, use it as much as you can. And like we're kind of cheapskates when we charge ours. We charge a thousand yen at a time. Some people are putting like a hundred thousand yeah. I mean, on uh, there. Uh, ten thousand. But sometimes we put ten thousand if we know we're going to be traveling a lot. Um, yeah, and the good thing, so what you want to do is install an app called IC Card Reader. I'll link to it down in, in the bottom. It's fantastic. You just tap your card to your phone and it'll tell you your balance and it'll also tell you where you used it, which is super awesome. So it's a very good, you know, accounting of it and then you'll know what your balance is so you can make sure that you spend it. And another alternative, also when you tap your IC card going through a ticket gate, it shows you your balance. So you know how much. And you know, you can use it on things like a vending machine or paying for luggage lockers. So if you think, oh no, I charged too much on this IC card and I'm leaving soon, just go buy your drinks using your IC card. Also, I wanted to say there's another alternative because of that whole chip shortage. You can get a digital um, one of these cards on an iPhone. So I have like a digital Pasmo on my phone. Somebody asked, how do we recharge that with cash? Yeah. There are charge stations that they look like ticketing machines, but certain ones say that you can charge your card there. If you have a regular card, you insert your card and then you can choose how much you're going to charge, put your cash in, it charges it up. If you have a phone, there's actually like a little nook in the machine where you set your phone in and then you do the same steps, choose how much you want to charge, put your money in, and it automatically puts that balance onto your phone. Yeah. So there'll be different ways, like, you know, for your phone, um, some of them will be standing up, so like you just take your phone and you just set it on it, or you, you place it into the slot. You'll see it, so if you see a bigger area, so usually you stick your card into the slot, but if it's large enough to stick your phone, just put your phone in there, and it'll, it'll charge it just like a regular IC card. And also, if any of the 7-Elevens and Family Mart, not any, but most of them, if they're in the station or near the station as well, you'll be able to charge them inside there as well. And the reason we're using cash to charge the PASMO on my phone is with our particular credit card. If we set up the Apple Pay and had it charged to my credit card, it would count as a cash advance and we don't want those fees. So it depends on your credit card company. So if you're thinking of going the digital route, putting your card on your phone, just check with your credit card company ahead of time. If you do this, when you go to charge it, through Apple Pay on your credit card. Will that be a cash advance or will it be a normal charge? Yeah, so please ask your credit card company. I like having a little card. It's just easy for me to whip it out. You know, some like people like having everything on their phone. I'm just, I'm not a very high techie A lot person. of people are using their watches now too, if you have an Apple Watch, it works too. But it's also good as a backup. Like yes, say you're exactly. rushed and you ran out of balance on your card and you just don't have time to charge it, then yeah. use the phone. And this is for local transport that's not covered by the JR Pass. If you're going <coughs> on a JR train, you're gonna be using your JR Pass. We're talking about IC cards for those like local subways and stuff. That yeah, we, we can go down a whole rabbit hole, so let's just move on. Move on. Yeah. Okay. Next question. So, benefit of green car first class versus ordinary car. Okay. Which is better? Yeah, so we had this like as an additional question if we got to it. It's more expensive for the green car. Right now, not so much more expensive, but it will be much more expensive after the price increase. They call it first class. Some people say it's really more like business class. It's a little bit bigger of seats, um, a little bit more room. For us, we don't like it as much because green car is like two seats next to each other. They're, right? they're two seats and they have dividers in between them. So if you're traveling with family with young kids, we don't like it because the kids can't lay down. It basically so in an ordinary car, there's three seats all together and like you can just move the armrests and then we have that three seats together and we can squish, you know, four yes. of us in there. Green car is more like you want quiet, you're just adults traveling, and you really want your own separate seat. There's some little perks, like you get an Oshibori sometimes, which is like those warmed up napkins. You may get a magazine and possibly a welcome drink. It's not like you get a whole lot more service. Is there more power outlets too? Yes, every seat will have a power outlet, which is nice. Um, you know, on the ordinary cars, not all seats, usually just the wall has it. I think the main advantage why people tend to choose the green JR Pass 
over the ordinary is because the green cards are 100% reserved, they're less likely to be like fully booked out. So if you're going in one of the more crowded holiday seasons and you're worried if you're going to be able to get a seat reservation, you're more likely to get those seat reservations if you do the green car pass. I mean, we've actually never... Yeah, we tried to one that. time, but we haven't been able to yet. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's mainly, I would say, for adults. It's not really meant for kids, though, you know, you could take a kid on there. That's not a problem. Uh, for people who are, you know, want quiet, want to do their work, and they don't want people standing in the aisles. And you want a little bit more space <laughs> right. more between space. you. Yes. For a family with young kids, we actually prefer ordin the ordinary, ordinary one. And also, you know, we're Americans. We tend to be a little bit louder than we ought to be on the trains, and I would feel bad, like, having our kids in the green car with people trying to work. You know, a lot of people commuting, they have their laptops, they're working on the train, so I'm not sure we're quiet enough <laughs> for a green car. Yeah, but if you want even a better class, some of the trains have what's called grand class, which is really more like first class, but that's not available on all the trains, and it's not even part of the pass. It's not so, part of the JR yeah. pass. Like, that's an experience if you want to pay for it separately. They do have a lot of cool, like, specialty trains in Japan, and many of the specialty trains are included in the JR pass, so if you want to go on one of the Hello Kitty trains, or, like, Pokemon trains, Anpaman train, you do have to book those in advance. They can fill up, but there are a lot of JR, like, special Really ones. nice perks. Yeah, really nice stuff. Um, we'll probably make some more episodes on that, so let us know if you guys are interested in that. Uh, okay, moving on. If we want to activate the seven-day passes on the November 26th, then I guess we wouldn't have the option of purchasing from the official website given their 30-day activation period. Is that correct? Correct. The official website's only going to let you buy one that you're going to redeem within the next 30 days. So that only applies to people who arrive in Japan within October. It does not apply unless you want to book through the official site at the higher price. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that's certainly an option too. And, and you know, one thing we're all selling people is the convenience. The JR Pass is just so convenient that in many cases it makes it worth it for, you know, for us. But basically, if you're traveling after October and you want the current price, use one of the travel agents. Kluke is one of them. You may also have a local travel agent in your town or something where you can go into their office as well. There's a, a not related question someone's asking about traveling to the fifth station in, in Mount Fuji. Let us know more information about what you need to know specifically about that. If you're planning to climb, the climbing season is officially over. Well, you still can climb it. There just won't be anybody to help you if you get stuck or something like that. But let us know what your question is and we'll see how we can help you on that. On our next trip to Japan, we plan to make more content letting you know how you can get close to Fuji, either to get a view or for those of you who are trying to climb it. He's climbed it before. <laughs> I haven't. It's recommended, but it's... it's a it's, once in a lifetime because you never yeah, want to do it again. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, what if you lose the JR Pass? No good, no good. good. It is not replaceable, not refundable. If you lose your pass, which is just a small <laughs> little train ticket sized thing, that's too bad. You want a new <laughs> JR Pass, you got to buy a new one. Yeah. So we have young kids. What we did is we got up to the ticket gate. I would take out everybody's passes, hand them out. We would all feed it through, grab it again. We've heard of people who made the mistake of not <laughs> grabbing back their pass after it goes through the automatic ticket gate. And then I would immediately gather them all. We'd stand out of the way so I'm not blocking anybody's path. I'd gather the passes, put them right back in the same place I always kept them in my purse. Because if you drop it, like say you have a kid and they drop it or somebody forgot to take it back out of the ticket gate, you're out of luck. It's not replaceable. Okay, next question. I am traveling in Japan on 26th of December 2023. I understand it's peak season. How do I reserve the train with JR Pass? I understand that we cannot reserve the seat before we arrive in Japan. Yes, with those dates and you trying to take advantage of current prices, you'll want to make your seat reservations right when you pick up your JR Pass, right when you redeem it in Japan. We've traveled that time of year. We yeah. don't have that yeah. big of an so, issue at that time of year. Christmas is not a holiday to them, so it's going to be busier at New Year. New Year's, so like January 1st is more likely right. to be packed. And nice. it's also going to depend on which direction you're going. So the people are going to be going to their hometowns. So if they're if you're going away from Tokyo or, or like also any of the bigger cities, it's going to be more crowded that way. But Whereas if you're going, if you're going in into the bigger big city, city, it's going to be less crowded on the train. Yes, and we have traveled that time. Yeah. It, it wasn't such a big deal. It was not a deal. problem. We actually... The, expre the, uh, the express trains were much more crowded than the Shinkansen. The times of year that we really 
think it gets crowded. It's like Oban season. That's in August, right? Yeah, and Golden Week for Golden sure. Golden Week. That's like okay. in April, right? In the springtime. Yes, yeah. May, May, in May. May. Yeah. Okay, so Golden Week, Oban season. Those are the ones. And yes, New Year's, like as in January 1st as well, can be crowded time. Can I purchase on the 23rd, I'm assuming September, and activate it on the 29th? All of September? I'm assuming that's it just says, can I purchase on the 23rd, 23rd to activate and on the 29th. 29th? So you're talking a six day window. <coughs> yeah. Um, I would just buy yeah, it even buy, sooner buy if you can. Yeah. So buy it. It's going to take four to five days for you to get this exchange order in your hand. So, you know, buy it as soon as you can. And then that might be cutting it close. That might be cutting it close. Yeah, I would so, buy it sooner. Like today or tomorrow this has to actually get mailed to you so they use something like dhl express yeah. shipping it takes four or five days to get this in your hands then you take this to japan to redeem you can also purchase it directly from uh, japan rail because yeah. you're still like within the time frame for that for the current prices i leave tomorrow night to japan but it's supposed to the jr pass arrive tomorrow morning oh, no. Oh no. What happened if the tickets arrive after I leave to Japan? That's not good. I, I don't know if there's any way. Yeah. Like they say that you have to have this physical thing that the confirmation email that something like Kluke sends you is not enough. But if I were in that boat and I didn't get this physical thing, I would still take whatever confirmation that I had, like from JR, from Kluke or whoever you bought it from. <coughs> I would still take that and beg and plead and hope they help you. But I don't know, technically you're supposed to have this physical exchange order, so I don't know. Yeah. That's why if you're cutting it close, we just, you know, don't recommend. Yeah, we hope you get it. Yeah. Yeah, hang Good in luck. there, hang Hopefully in there. Hopefully it yes. comes sooner. Hang in there. And then if it doesn't, still try showing like your email confirmation and see what happens. Let us know. I hope it works out. I want to support your channel. Thanks. We uh, want to order through Kluke. Hoping that ordering on September 28th will be okay. As long as you are not traveling, I'd say within the next five days, yes, it should be fine. And, you know, farther out, the better. Yes. Yeah, we've been back and forth with Kluke, and, they, you know, they're saying people can still buy it on September 30th. It just um, comes down the whole time zone thing is why we're saying, you know, try to buy it before 29th. But 28th, it should be fine to buy through Kluke. And that must be because you're going late December that you need to buy it that late. Hi, my name is I. I live in Las Vegas. We are leaving for the Philippines next summer with an extra short trip to Japan. Do we do the Ekiban you buy in the train stations change per season? Usually, yes. Yeah. So they're referring to like the bento boxes that you can buy at the stations. If you're riding a bullet train, we highly recommend you buy your food in the in the station and you take it onto the train with you because it's not like trains other places that might have like a dining food car. They might have a snack cart and they might have no food on board. So um, yeah, they probably have different seasonal foods yes. and selections yes. and just ton of selections. There's usually things kind of like a cafeteria that have a bunch of those boxes. Then there's like 7-Eleven family marts in the <clears> train stations <throat> that have just simple like the little masubi onigiri yeah. rice ball snacks that we get. But yeah. if you if you want the ekiban, if you want the bento box, just look around. Especially in a big station like Tokyo Station, there's going to be a ton of selection, and you're going to be able to find something unique for sure. We usually get it before we head to our platform. So you get in there, there's shops, there's different options. You can pick up your bento box. Then we head to our platform. Sometimes there are also small shops, like stands, selling more of the bento boxes and other food on the platform. You'll just have more of a limited selection. So buy it early if you have time at the station. Okay, how far in advance can I reserve a seat for future Shinkansen trips? They allow reservations up to 30 days in advance. 30 days. And this is the main reason there are differences between buying through the official website and like buying it through a travel agent is anybody, <coughs> whether you're in Japan or you're a tourist, you can only reserve seats up to 30 days in advance, right? Yeah, and it, it doesn't matter if you're a local or anyone, 30 days in advance is the farthest you can book. That's why you can only buy your JR Pass through the official site. 30 days ahead because they allow you to reserve right away and you can only ever reserve a seat 30 days in advance and then if you have an exchange order you don't reserve until you've picked up your actual JR pass okay we're traveling Osaka to Kyoto to Tokyo I guess we don't need the JR pass we plan to take the fast train from Kyoto to Tokyo how many days in advance should I book the ticket if you are not traveling during 
a holiday season, or if you're not going to be traveling during rush hour, then you could even book it the day before and you should be fine. But obviously, farther in advance, the better. If you have a few days, because when you're picking up those individual tickets, there's kind of different methods. You pick up your ticket, right? That's true. So, I mean, if you can do it a few days in advance. There's been people asking us, like, can I reserve a Shinkansen that day right before I get on it? And yes, you can, yeah. like, go to the station yeah. and buy a Shinkansen ticket the day you're trying to go. There might not be as many reserved seats left. And then I guess what I'm saying is if you're trying to buy it online and you're going to have to go physically pick up your ticket somewhere, that's why you might want to buy it you know, a few days in advance. Yeah. Again, we're going to make a couple of videos showing you two different ways how you can purchase these online. It makes it really easy. And, and Kathy, if, if you are going from Kyoto to Tokyo, definitely write the Nozomi. This is the one time I would say take it because it doesn't cost any extra when you're buying the tickets individually. Exactly. If you're just buying tickets, it's yeah. the same price. It'll be the fastest route and uh, it's not going to be smooth or anything, but yeah, we, we took trip. it on our last trip to that almost same route. Any more questions? Okay, next question. Can we only reserve our green car seats once we get to Narita? We plan to go to Kyoto the next morning. Okay, so if you're buying through a travel agent and you're redeeming an exchange order, then yes, you can't make your reservations until you've got your actual JR Pass in hand. If you're buying through the official website and traveling in October, then you could you go ahead and reserve right away. Again, it's usually not a it's big usually not deal a yeah. to, to like reserve people your seats. are always nervous about yeah. reserving seats and unless yeah. you're going a super busy time of year, right. it's usually not a big deal. Especially since you're traveling green car, those are never as crowded anyways. They're not likely to be full because they cost more. So not as many people buy the green car. We travel first time to Japan in February 2024, stay a week. We intend to spend a day in Kyoto. Is it better to buy a JR Regional or JR Pass? Did they say where they're coming from? Is it Tokyo to Kyoto? No, yeah, so we need a little more information about where you plan to travel. Were they saying they're past the whole? And yes, it's going to be in February. Like that For is a also... week, we uh, intend to spend a day in Kyoto. Yeah, so... That's also the time period where the JR Pass prices will have increased. So yeah. a basic, ordinary seven-day JR Pass is going to be 50,000 yen. It's probably not going to be something that's financially going to be worth it at that point. There are regional passes. Yes. Is that in the Kansai area? If you are staying area? in the Kansai area, which is the Kyoto, Osaka, Wakayama, you know, in that region around there, then it, you, getting a regional pass there's might like be... like a Kansai-wide pass yeah. that will allow you to visit a lot of the cities. So right there's, the there's two, the Kansai-wide, which covers a larger area, or just the Kansai area, which is a smaller area. Um, it really depends on where you're going to go. If you want to give us more specific information, we can help you. That, and yes, we will be making videos about that. People have been asking us about the Kansai area and Kansai wide passes. We do plan to make future videos on that. Got to do all the research. Yeah, th these are going to be worth it a lot more once the prices go up. Is it worth it to go to USJ, Universal Studios Japan, uh, from Tokyo and then back to Tokyo afterwards with the JR Pass. Like in the same day, I would not recommend it. So I make a lot of videos about tips for visiting USJ and my number one tip is to get in line an hour and a half before the opening time. So like be in line at 7.30. We did hear from somebody Some who like it. took the bullet did train that, that yeah. morning and they were able to get in line by like 8 a.m. That's not personally our style. <laughs> like I would go and stay near there. I would stay in Osaka, but maybe you've already booked all your hotels in Tokyo. It is possible, <coughs> and then in that case, you might want to also purchase an express pass. Okay, so if you're going all the way to Tokyo, taking the bullet train to Osaka, you might not be able to get in line super early, so you may want to buy an express pass to make sure you get into like Super Nintendo World and whatever rides you want to do that day. And then, yeah, you can get on the bullet train, go back to Tokyo, you know. Yeah. It really depends on what you're going to do. If you want, if your objective is to go to Super Nintendo World, then it's probably not a good idea. Or, or at well, least... no, they can if they buy an express pass. Oh, that's true, if you buy an express so pass. So you can go that day yeah. from Tokyo if you have you an can. express pass because the express pass will give you a designated time to enter Super Nintendo World, so you're guaranteed you have a time to enter Super Nintendo World. We tell people who don't buy an express pass, you know, get in line at 7.30. That would be hard if you're coming all the way from Tokyo. Yeah. But if you're coming from Tokyo, you could buy a one-day studio pass and an express pass, and you could do that all in one day. We have young kids. We don't do stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My husband and I bought the JR Pass from Kluke, but our son that lives there will travel with us in the trains using normal tickets. Mm -hmm. Is there any tip that we can seat close together in the train? Unreserved is your best option. That 
or like if they can go ahead and book their tickets already and then you try to get tickets and that might not work yeah yeah unreserved yeah uh, traveling unreserved then you'll absolutely have no problem but if you want to travel reserved it's going to be a little bit more harder like if you if, if you, you are purchasing let's, let's say, say if you purchase your tickets through the official website and you can have your you know, your son purchasing his at the same time he, i mean you can always change your seats later it's easier to mm. do if it'll be easier for him to change his um, and then you could you know look at the charts together and say okay we're going to we want this car and these seats and you know you, it's it's or, possible or when you arrive just all go to the ticketing office together you make your reservation under your JR pass and then separately he buys the train ticket like you could yeah, do that you could do that but yeah. the easiest will be going in an unreserved car because yeah. then you just take seats next to each other it's a first come first serve on the unreserved can we take the seven day pass when we come for 11 nights 12 days will it be okay yes and most so yes. a lot of times people think like oh i'm going for a trip longer than seven days i need to get the 14 day pass we recommend getting the shortest pass that will still get you where you need to go so our recommendation say if you fly into tokyo spend a few days there then on the day that you leave to head to another city that's far away that's the day you activate your pass you use those seven days to go all your far distances say get back to tokyo if that's where you're flying out of then maybe you might want to have another day or two in tokyo so you only need the jr pass to cover your far travel distance days if you don't have it right away like getting from the airport into the city it's an inexpensive ticket just pay for that separately if you don't have it for a couple days in tokyo just pay for those trains like using an ic card separately so yes normally with 11 day itinerary i would only recommend buying a seven day pass if you want to save money you know if you're going for 11 days and you just want the ultimate inconvenience and ultimate inflexibility you could opt for the 14 day pass i think i have it written down right here that in u.s dollars a 14 day pass ordinary car is currently 120 dollars more than the seven day pass so you know is it worth 120 dollars more for you to have the pass cover those few more days or you save money, only get a seven day pass and use it when you need it. Okay, so we're getting this question a lot, so I want to address this again. If we purchase from the official website now, you are required to activate it within 30 days. Yes. Basically, when you do that way, there's a calendar that pops up and you choose like the date that you will be picking up your JR pass. It's only going to give you a range in the next 30 days as options to choose from. It will not give you an option to buy one more in the future so that's why like for those of you who want to buy through the official site like you want to make those seat reservations you have a much shorter window of when you can do that by before the prices go up because that official website prices will be increased on october 1st okay hi from singapore my wife and i are headed to japan for our honeymoon in november wow, congratulations. congratulations yeah after four years nice okay uh we've air purchased our jr pass before the price hike uh how much more for the nozomi it will depend. Oh, wait, they purchased before the price yes. hike? Then oh, I don't think... Yes, you can. As far as we know... As far as we know, the Nozomi's just not included right. at all if you bought it at the cheaper price. Correct. It's not a big deal. Like, he always says, like, it gets you there, like, 20 minutes faster. It's the same kind of train as the Hikari that is included. It's... I guess, I don't know, people think it's something special, but yeah. it's just a little bit faster train. It's fine if you can't use it. Right. We believe, and we could be wrong, but we believe if you purchase at the current lower prices, you don't get that perk of the Nozomi. It's people who purchase October 1st mm -hmm. onward who get like the extra perks. Yes. And again, if you are, if you wanted to take the Nozomi, the alternate is the Hikari on that line, and it is about 20 or 30 minutes. It takes about 20 or 30 minutes longer, but it is just as nice of a train. It's the same kind you of You still train. get them really fast. And things are changing. Like we give the current information that we found from the JR website, but they have a website where they always put out the new announcements. So we may make a video and a few days later they announce some new thing and it's yeah. changing. And on top of that, you know, we, we've gone to, into the office several times and asked them questions and they are usually clueless as far as the information that goes up. It, so they're in the dark themselves. They, like the they, people working the ticket counter right. in the JR office. They're not office, getting any information. They might not know the latest and so we, we see different things circulating. A lot of details just have not been finalized right. for what's going to be included with the new JR pass. Right. Can I buy the JR pass now to use in April next year or is the maximum three months after purchase date? 
It's that 90 day window, 90 days. counting date of purchase and date of redemption. So and again, that is only if you purchase it through an agent. Yeah, otherwise you have a 30 day window. So sorry, with that, with that travel date, it will be at new prices. So then you just have to see, are you going a whole lot of cities, far distances, is it worth it? Or should I just get individual tickets? If I book, purchase my JR Pass with Kluke, am I able to reserve my individual trip tickets online on the JR Rail website? No, sorry. So this is the main benefit of purchasing the JR through the official site, japanrailpass.net, is so you can reserve them ahead of time. This is the only way you can do it. If you need reser to reserve your seats, is to purchase directly through them. Because if you go through an agent, you basically just have an exchange order. Your actual like JR Pass has not been issued yet, and there's a certain <clears throat> number associated with your JR Pass. So it's not until you have that number and that actual real JR Pass that you can make seat reservations. So basically, when you do it through official website, it's like you already have your JR Pass has already been designated, like your pass number and everything. If you buy through an agent, it's not until you get your JR Pass that you have like an official JR Pass number and you can make a seat reservation. And also the last four digits of your social security card or your social security number will be on your JR Pass. So it's really only for you to use. It's not something you can let somebody else use your JR Pass. If you make reservations through a ticketing machine, you will need to have your passport number and your JR Pass to make those seat reservations. All right, regarding luggage, I need to send my most likely oversized luggage from Tokyo to, from my Tokyo hotel to my Kyoto stay. Do I need to arrange this one or two days beforehand? Don't want it arriving the same day. That's a really good question. So yes, you should try to ship it off as soon as possible. And the good thing is what you can do is when you, when you ask your hotel to fill out this information is tell them when you want it to arrive. You can do that. Yes. So there's a spot on the form that's date you want it to be delivered. And then they're kind of like time ranges, you know, like you want it to get there in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening, because you, did they say hotel? If it's a hotel, the reception. No problem if you're going hotel to hotel, but if you're in if a homestay or something, you said Kyoto stay, if, if, if it's an Airbnb or something like that, then you need um, to be present. You need, you need to be to present. Be so there. make sure you make sure you put a time when you know you're going to be there. So you put the date and you put the time range yeah. when you want it to arrive and you be there waiting for it. Now, worst case scenario, if you're not, they're just not going to deliver it. OK, and they will try to redeliver it again. So this is this is where the air tag could really come in handy. Or, you know, you just check online where the station is and you could even go pick it up yourself at that point. Or you could just have it shipped to the nearest office, the JR office, instead of to your homestay. And then also, you know, most people are not going to have a Japanese phone number, but if you're going to be using something like Yamato Transport a lot, you could get a SIM card that has a phone number included, and he has a whole video on SIM card versus pocket Wi-Fi. If you think you're going to use these services a lot, you could get a SIM card that has a local Japanese phone number, just so like if they try to deliver it and you're not there, they could call you, but you, you need to be there when they yeah. deliver. Yeah. Unless it's a hotel. Hotel reception takes care of it for you. Something like, you know, homestay, Airbnb, like you can always contact your host too and see if it's a homestay. Yeah. They might. You can always yeah. ask your host, it's okay to have this delivered there. Okay, when will the Hokuriku Shinkansen timetable for uh, January be available? Currently not available on Kluk. Oh, interesting. Um, it might be listed under something else. Can you just, when you enter your route, uh, put in, you know, Tokyo to probably to Nagano or, you know, whatever station you are and, and look at that. If it's not, um, let us know. We'll find out. Sometimes you need to know like the particular train station yeah. names. Like, yes. you know, if you're trying to go to Osaka, the bullet train goes to Shin Osaka Station. If you're trying to go to Fukuoka, it goes to Hakata Station. So sometimes if you're trying to enter and you're not seeing what you need, make sure you know the name of the station. I didn't I didn't quite catch what the question was. It was about um, the timetable's not available on the currently on the Clue website. Okay. I think sometimes Kluke can kind of sell tickets like pre-order, like they're kind of doing an advance of what JR would sell the tickets and sometimes not. So, Well, that's right. It's 90 days. 30 days, is it? No, the, you, uh, on, on Kluke, you can, the Shinkan sends up to 90 days. 90 days. That's no, why that's... it's not on there. It's more than 90 days. Okay, Sorry, that's right the question. Okay, but you wouldn't make a seat reservation until you're within like the 30-day right. window Correct. for reservations. Yeah. Okay, if we buy the JR Pass from Kluke now for a trip in November, can we pay extra in November to ride the two Super Express bullet trains? Again, that would be the Nozomi and Mizuho. Probably not. Yeah, we think if you buy it at current prices, you get what's currently included. And if you buy it at the higher price, like if you really, really want that, you could wait and buy it at the higher price, then you get the new perks. Is what we believe. 
we haven't found something like really officially written, but it makes sense. Like you buy the current pass, you get what it currently includes. I will arrive on the 26th of December. Do I buy it on September 26th from Kluke within the 90 day window? You get out a calendar and you count all the little squares and you yeah. include the day you're purchasing and you include that day you're arriving and you make sure all the little <laughs> I would purchase it on the 28th or 29th personally. Because Give you yourself that extra space. Yes, because what if you actually have a flight delay and you arrive a day later than you think you're going to? So, I mean, 28th should be September 28th should be safe for purchasing the JR Pass. Yes, yes. Uh, can I reserve the seat for the Shinkansen on the official site after ordering from Kluke? Again, no. Only The only way you can reserve on the official site is if you've purchased your tickets through the official site. Then you have like a login account and everything. You can go in there and make your seat reservations. And somebody asked about canceling a seat reservation they made on the official site. Our best guess on that is you log in and you cancel it there. But we have not personally done that, so we don't have a lot of information about the exact process to cancel if you messed up in making your reservation. This is another good thing about having the chair pass. You mess up on a reservation, it's pretty easy to get a new one. When we've like individually bought tickets from the machine, we've sometimes made a mistake. You know, the way it's written like 1600 hours and you're thinking six o'clock and that's really 4 p.m. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, okay. Hi, how are the seven days counted? Is it from day one? Day seven, midnight, not understanding the question. Um... Okay, no, we have this in one of our videos and we show a calendar. So activation date, the day you set to activate is day one. It does not matter if you start using the pass in the morning or you start using it in the evening or, or you forget and you don't even use your pass. The day it's you starting. set as activation is day one. Then they run consecutive days. So if you have a seven day pass and it activates on Monday, it will run through Sunday and it will go until 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. So it's consecutive days and activation date is day one. And then day seven, you got to use it within day seven. It never ever extends into day eight. Does that make sense? Okay, sorry guys, we're, we're going a little over, but uh, you know, this is going great. We want to try to get all your questions answered here. So a few more. And this will be recorded on our channel. You can rewatch yes. it later. With the JR Pass, do we still need the Suica? Good question. Yes, we do recommend still having a Suica card because yes, local JR trains are included in the JR Pass, but not all trains are JR. There are other lines. Like for instance, if you're going out in the Hakone area, there is Odaku Railway. And you know, if you need to take a subway, then there are some trains that are not included in the JR Pass. So we say maximize use of your JR Pass, but yes, you will likely need something like a Suica. It's not 100% required. You could purchase individual train tickets, but you need to go up to the machine, select your route, insert money. Like buying tickets is just so much more of a hassle than having a card you simply tap. And those IC cards, they also work on buses. They work on things like some of the luggage lockers are set up for them. Vending machines, I mean, you can pay for stuff at stores with an mm -hmm. IC Even card. Even some restaurants too, especially in the, in the train stations. So, yeah. Most likely, you Most will likely, take yes. some transportation that's not yeah. included. And to reiterate again, please get this at the airport. Okay, you're going to want to get the Welcome Suica or the Pasmo Passport because they're most likely not going to be available in any station in any of the cities. Because those little IC chips ran out of supply, right. so they're yeah. not having luck. If you've been to Japan before and you have one, it. if it's still within like 10, 10 years, years, just bring it back. That's what we do. We hold on to ours, we keep it because we have regular ones. We don't have those. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> tourist ones that are limited to like 30 days. Correct. If you have a regular IC card, you know, or if a friend's been to Japan and they kept theirs, you know, take it back because unfortunately they ran out yeah. of chips and it's just harder to get. Right. If you have an iPhone, you can get a digital one on your phone. And if you're flying in places like Osaka or uh, Sapporo or even uh, Fukuoka, you can still get the IC cards in the cities. So they won't be called Suica, okay, or Pasmo, but it doesn't matter, they're going to work everywhere, okay? Whatever yes. the IC card is, it will work anywhere in Japan. Each region calls it something different, but then mm -hmm. you can go and use that throughout Japan. We have an assortment, like three or four different types of cards, and they work everywhere. Okay, is the app also applicable for Android phones to track? Yes, oh, absolutely. It works both on Android and iOS. Super awesome. Can you explain, Perfect. even to me, can you not get a digital IC card on an Android? Correct, so uh, uh, that's a different question. But okay. Yes, yes. So unless, if you have an Android phone, Unless it was purchased in Japan, you cannot have a digital Suica or Pasmo card. But you can use the app to track your usage. Yes, but to track your, your, yes. if you want to track your usage, it'll work on any phone. 
on any any uh, iOS or Android device. Okay, we need to add a link to that. I don't yes. think we've yeah, looked we'll at that put, yet, well, but we can we'll add sure a link. We'll put a link to that in the description below. You can use that app. We are flying on September 22nd. Don't think we will receive our certificate in time to redeem our JR passes at Haneda. If purchased tonight, is showing passports an option to redeem in person? You're saying today's September 18th and you're arriving September 22nd. I don't think I would buy yeah. online at this point, unless you were buying through the official website, because that's like an email confirmation. I wouldn't purchase through an agent like Fluke at this point. You currently in September can still buy your JR pass in Japan. in Japan. So you could show up with your passports, go to JR office and purchase it. That's currently through September. You can purchase in person. Yes, or you can purchase it through the official site still. You yes. have time for that too. But I would not risk yeah. 18th to 22nd. I would not buy it through don't, an agent. Don't purchase it from Kluker. Unless you have a travel agent in your town yes, and you true. physically walk into, like, you know, people used to go to travel agents in person. <laughs> if you have that, like in Hawaii, they have travel agents. You can walk in the door. Otherwise, too late, too late to get this sent to you. We don't want you missing it. Okay, seven day pass on Kluke, yay. And you can turn seats, I heard. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so if you're in a group of like four people and you want, <laughs> I can't quite show this, you want to spin around one set of chairs, you can end up with a quad of four people facing each other. There are some disadvantages of that is when you're facing the normal way, there's like hooks on the back of the seat where you can hook a little purse or a small backpack or a bag. And then once you spin the seats, you have a little bit less leg room, like if you're trying to put some luggage in between there, and you have a little bit less like hooks to hang your bags. Yeah. But yes, yeah, you definitely can. Yeah. If you have four people, you can be sitting together. Or like us, we have that fifth kid, they can be squished in there too, and it's like a nice little just our family or just your group facing each other. And it's not just the green car, all ordinary cars also, uh, they spin yeah. around too. Basically, the trains go back and forth, and so when it gets to its end destination, somebody comes to the train and spins all the seats, so then the seats are facing the way, so that yeah, you'll direction. always be facing like you're going forward, but they just rotate the seats. For a while, I think because of COVID, they weren't letting people spin the seats around, but most recently, we, we were able to. Okay, have you ever taken advantage of the hotel discounts that they say they offer with the JR Pass? I've heard mixed opinions on how much the benefit is for the JR Pass. I guess the JR Pass had some extra benefits and we were never aware of what yeah. any of those extra benefits were, so we have never taken yeah. advantage of any hotel scams or anything. But, you know, hopefully that there's going to be new ones added and if there are, we will, you know, check them out and, and try them out to let you guys know. Well, that's supposed to be a big added benefit at this yeah. new prices is more discounts. Right. I don't know what there was. But one thing, with. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but one thing, we have stayed in some of their hotels, just not with a discount, and what we like about them is they're connected to the station, you know? Yeah, and it so can be really, really nice. nice like you get off the train and then you literally go to your yeah. hotel right there at the station and then say if you have a train the next day that's like ultimate convenience because yeah. often when you're staying like an Airbnb you might take your bullet train and then you might take a local train and then you might take another local train and then you might take a subway <laughs> and then you might walk two blocks to get to your Airbnb and your back is killing you and your suitcase is not rolling on the uneven sidewalk so the time we stayed in one of those like um hotels that was part of the train station that was super nice yeah and by the way it was not noisy it was soundproof it was amazing we thought it might be loud but uh, didn't hear a trains. single thing exactly so it was nice and train stations are like giant shopping malls they have restaurants sometimes grocery stores they have so much shopping so train station isn't just like a place that trains pull into it's like a mega mall <laughs> Do we have a JR Pass handy? Sorry, we don't have okay. a JR Pass because when we used it up on the last day, they actually collected them from us. Oh, I got so one. You Somewhere. do have one? Yeah. <laughs> I think my son kept his. Anyways, it's about two inches. It's it's like it's like the size of a little bit larger than, than a business card. Now, if you watch our beginner's guide to the JR Pass, which is a video already on our channel, we show what the JR Pass currently looks like. In the past, it was more like a little brochure that had a picture of Fuji and some cherry blossoms on it. Now, it is the size and shape and it functions as a train <coughs> ticket. So, if you are riding unreserved, in an unreserved train car, all you do is you insert your JR Pass into the automatic ticket gate, collect it, you go to your platform, you get on the train. So, it's super convenient. It now works like a train ticket. Because in the past, you had to go up to the counter and show a person your like little brochure, lanyard, <laughs> JR Pass, and they don't want you having to make a lot of contact with people. So the JR Pass is now functions like a train ticket. 
Got a clue question. Is the participation date the date I want the pass to activate? Participation date when you are purchasing a JR Pass on Kluke is the date your flight departs to Japan. This is because they need to know that they're going to be able to get the exchange order to you in time. And then also, if you were to order your exchange order a whole 90 days in advance, they might wait until a little bit closer to your departure date to send it to you. So when buying on Kluke, planned participation date for JR Pass is date of your flight to Japan. If you're booking something like Disneyland tickets, planned participation date would be the day you're going to Disneyland. And if you're going to be using Kluke for more things than just your JR passes, we do have an exclusive discount code, Kencho Quest, that gives 5% off of things like Disneyland tickets. It applies to other attractions, unfortunately not USJ, and then you have to have a minimum spend amount. So whenever you're on there on Kluke, you can just attempt putting in Kencho Quest and see if it gives you a discount. It does not work on JR passes or any of those kind of transportation ones because JR is very strict about charging their prices. Right. So. Okay. I received my exchange order last week, bought from Kluke in Singapore, but it doesn't look like the one we showed. It is different depending on your country or purchase. They could change it up like this. Basically here, this is an advertisement for the Japan Navi Time app. So maybe some advertiser bought that spot and maybe your, your pass looks different. If I were to open this up, it has our personal details in it, like our name and stuff. I just don't want to show all that information, but it shows like that it was issued in Hong Kong, how much we paid, which class that it's ordinary, that it's a seven day, it has full name of the person that's going to use it. So as long as whatever exchange order you received has like your name, your type of pass, the length of pass, that's fine. It could look different. Ours is basically like a billboard. Okay, can you make arrangements for Yamato Kuroneko online ahead of time? Hmm. Yes, you can. It's not easy though. You're gonna have to create an account and stuff. If you want to do it ahead of time, I recommend you call them. There is an English speaking number. Um, it's busy quite often, so you just have to keep trying. So basically when you first arrive in Japan, you just go in person with your suitcases to make the arrangements. And then later, if you want to make arrangements when you're already in Japan, that's when you could call the English speaking hotline. That would mostly apply if you're staying in an Airbnb and you need to arrange for Yamato to come get your bags. If you're staying in a hotel, just tell the front desk They're staff gonna have, they will 100 and, and they know. can arrange it. Like always, it's a good idea if you can to make the arrangements a couple of days in advance. What other areas do you recommend going if you've already been to Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo, Takayama, Kanazawa, Hiroshima, yeah, and Miyajima? Awesome. Oh wow, you've been everywhere. <laughs> Hokkaido. <laughs> Hokkaido, yes, Hokkaido. So one of our favorite parts of Japan is the northern island of Hokkaido. It is beautiful in the summertime. There are these flower fields in bloom that are just so gorgeous. And then it's a winter wonderland, wonderland. paradise in the snow. So our next trip will be going in February for the ice festival in Sapporo. So we love Hokkaido any time of year. Yeah, we have some videos um, from the winter time this past winter. Um, Things to do in Sapporo. Yeah, we, we can link to those in the bottom below. But other places you can go to as well is if you haven't been down to Fukuoka, I recommend you know uh, taking the pass and going way down there. It's really nice. And you know you've been to Kanazawa, but you might also want to ch check out a little bit higher up in the area is um, the Kurobe Gorge. Uh, yes. area so so this is part of like of the, the hokuriku, the hokuriku arch pass, pass area where well, you've place, already said kanazawa but yeah. there's there's more things you might want to explore explore more in that area i don't know if you've been to gifu and or you know uh, what is that place uh ainokura and shirakawa mm. where they have like these old houses where they they're like, the shaped wooden like this. Houses. it's an unesco world heritage place just stunning stunning beautiful architecture and just a lot of really nice stuff it really depends what you want to do there's a ton to do you know in the fuji area as well i don't know if you've been up to nikko or or just um, you know, and uh, southwest of, uh, no, southeast of Tokyo is Kamakura, uh, which is also close to, to Fuji. That whole area is just, just so much to see and do. And Japan has so much. It has the cities, but it has so much beautiful nature as well. Yeah, there's still so much that we haven't seen, and we've been going for 30 years. So <laughs> I've been going for 20 now, right? <laughs> he's, <Yeah>. he's old. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot to see and do. And let us know what you're interested in, and, and then you know we might be able to be more tips. And, yeah, and we've had some vague too. questions like, well, what should I do in Japan for 14 days? And I'm sorry if we don't get back to you, but <laughs> if you want like recommendations, we need to know, do you want to do outdoor sports? Do you want to do trekking? Are you a city person who wants to go shopping? Like, if you want some right. recommendations of what to do, a general, yeah, idea, general idea of like, what type of things you like, nature or otherwise. I have to be in Japan during Golden Week. Should I spend the week in Tokyo or visit other cities? It's going to be busy. Gonna be it's going to be crowded. 
Yeah, you can definitely spend the whole week in the Tokyo area, um, and I would go. I would personally go to Fuji area, like the Hakone area, mm. and um, Kamakura, where we just mentioned as well. Those are just absolutely stunning places that you can spend the entire week, and be and not have to worry about getting on the Shinkansen and going down to Kyoto, where it's just going to be insane. You know, it's going to be so crowded. Japan is trains. crowded no matter what. So if you're in one of those major holiday seasons, like we purposely do not travel during <laughs> normally. Right. Normally, we don't travel during the holiday seasons. But it, will that also coincide with the cherry blossoms then? Mm, a little late for that. Okay. It's possible you might see some, but, but probably not. So I recommend you know staying in, in the Tokyo area. There's still so much to see. It's you a can huge spend, area. Yeah, I mean, huge area. You can spend a year in there and still see less than half of it. So. There's plenty to do in Tokyo. Let us know if you have any specific questions on that. Okay. The only Shinkansen trip I am somewhat concerned about is our Kyoto to Tokyo leg on the 29th of December it is close to New Year, which is a big holiday in Japan. If we reserve on the 25th, will that be okay? They're going towards Tokyo, so the opposite direction. It'll be the opposite direction. You're traveling on the 29th. Plus the 29th. Um, it's going to start to get busy, but most people are going to be going the other direction. I would try to reserve that as soon as you're in your 30-day window. So as soon as you... Um, well, if they, it depends if they're buying it through an agent. They wouldn't be able to until they get there on the 25th. Oh. If we reserve on the 25th. Well, it doesn't say when they're arriving. If they make the reservation on yeah. the 25th, just make it right away when you can on the 25th. Yeah, yeah. Just do it as soon as you can. So if that's as soon as you can reserve it, then, then you know, do that. Okay, I'm seeing that we're going quite yeah, long want, here, but, so we're going to need to wrap but, it up uh, soon. Soon, but we still have a lot of questions. We'll try to get through these yes. as much as we can. And most of the questions we get have been answered in one of our previous videos, so you can always go back to our other Japan Rail Pass videos and re-watch those or watch them for the first time if you haven't seen them yet. Okay, good day. I'm traveling from Hokkaido to Tokyo, then to Nagoya, Kyoto, and Nara Himeji, and then Osaka. Awesome. Is this JR Pass fine for all these places? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. There are JR chains. So if you're coming to, where did they say they're starting from? All the way? From Hokkaido. So Hokkaido. From so Sapporo to Hakodate, it's not a bullet train. However, there is a, J a JR express train, right? Yes. So that first leg there, yes, you can use your JR pass. You can get on a JR train. It just won't be a super fast train. As soon as you hit Hakodate, then you can get on a bullet train and most of the way down the rest of the way. You'll Pretty much everywhere else bullet trains. you can take the bullet train except to Nara you'll have to take a different train. But all That's those right. other places the bullet train stops in all those locations. And yes, the JR Pass will serve you for all of that. The whole Japan JR Pass is just awesome because it's such comprehensive coverage. Like when we did the Hokuriku Arch Pass, that one was much more limited. You had to stick to a specific route. The JR one, it's like, you know, as long as it's a JR train, a JR bus, or even the Miyajima Ferry. If it's JR, you're pretty good. Okay, again, regarding the additional benefits for the rail pass. So yes, they do have hotel discounts. They also have discounts for uh, like renting cars. Uh, we might make a, an episode on that if you guys are interested in that. Um, hopefully there will be more added to it, but those are the main things that they're offering right now. And as we mentioned before, we have not taken advantage of any hotel discounts yet. When you go through the ticket gates, do you put in the Japan Rail Pass and the Shinkansen ticket, or just the JR Pass, or just the ticket? Okay, so we've had like all, all of the above different experiences. I'd say default, just insert your JR Pass. Now, if it beeps at you and sends it back to you because you also need like an additional train ticket, you can stack your other train ticket and send them through together. The only times we did that, it was like the attendant standing there explained to us, you need to put them both through together. Normally, seat reservation tickets you mm -hmm. don't need to put through. Like, you just keep your seat reservation ticket tucked away in case you need to prove it's your seat. But most of the time, there was an attendant standing there, so if we had any issue. By default, because I think on the most recent trip, we were really just inserting our just, JR just pass. JR pass so try that first. If something doesn't work, it'll like make a noise at you and spit your ticket back out, and then you can try something different. You can usually just ask the person, the attendant standing right there, what do I do? <laughs> so usually you're only going to have one. Okay, that's your JR Pass, and you're going to use that. That's what you're going to put through. If you had reserved a seat, then you'll have another one. You're not going to have any other if, if you've purchased the JR Pass. Sometimes you end up with like three for some reason, don't you? I don't know. Not with the JR Pass. Okay. okay. Have you had any experiences at the JR office in Hakata Station? I understand there is only one office at that station. Are the lines long there? Sorry, we have not. Hakata we have it's not been a long Hakata time since I mean, we've been that way. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've been down there. So, sorry, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. 
what is a good pocket Wi-Fi to get? Yeah, we have a whole video on that. Yeah, if you, if you want to, to learn more about that, we'll put a link in the description below. But two that we tested recently thoroughly um, in our last trip was uh, Sakura Mobile and Ninja Wi-Fi. They are both fantastic. Um, I tested mostly Sakura this past time, and what I really like about them is I never got throttled. That means that um, even though there is a limit on how much data you could use per day, which is usually about three gigabytes, after that amount, they can throttle you, which means they can slow your internet connection down to a crawl, which is usually 120 kilobits per second, which is really slow. So with them, this never happened to me. I was using seven, eight gigs every single day. And this, the reason why it didn't happen was probably because there weren't a lot of people on the network. So if the network gets really busy, then they can throttle you. Again, the two ones that I highly recommend are Sakura Mobile and Ninja Wi-Fi. We will link to both of those in the description below. Yes, and we try to include a lot of Japan-related links in the description boxes of our videos. So if you're wondering about a specific link to something like Wi-Fi, you can just click on the description box of any of our videos, and likely if you scroll down far enough, you'll find what you're looking for. Would you say Katsushika City is inconvenient location to book a stay for first-time visitors to the country? What do you think? I have no idea what Katsushika City is. <laughs> when people give questions, I go research. I just look this stuff up online. Um, yeah, you know, um, for first-time visitors, it might be a little bit inconvenient, I would say. So I, there's just so much to see and do. So unless you really, really want to go there, I mean, it's going to be less crowded for sure. If you're good with navigating, I mean, that's the thing. If you're good with navigating, you can get where you need to go. Yeah. Which train do you go in a circle if you're lost? I tried to write it down, but couldn't catch the name. Okay, if you are in go Tokyo, it is the Yamanote. Ya Yamanote line. It is Yamanote. the green. It's it's the green train. It's like a light lime green that goes all around it. And just an interesting fact, they they play uh, music like on every station that's unique to the area. So, anyways, that's I'm a, a tangent. <laughs> if you're in Osaka, it's the Osaka Loop train. Osaka Loop train in Osaka in Tokyo. It is the Yamanote line. Yes, so as long as you stay near one of those lines, it will be really convenient that you can hop on going this way or going this way, and then, you know, come back in a loop, you'll get back. You'll get back to where you were started from. How do I know which local trains are included with the JR Pass? Again, uh, you want to use the Japan Travel app by Navitime. We'll link to that in the description below. It is available for, you know, both iOS and Android devices. And you set the filter within there to filter for Japan Rail Pass. When you're in a train station, if it says JR and then the name of the line, it's a JR train, it's included. If it just is some other name without JR in it, then it's not included. Okay, is that for the Suica Welcome Card? I'm not, I don't know what we mentioned about that, but the Suica Welcome Card is available at the airports and that's the one that is still available for foreigners to get. Again, at the airport is where you want to get it. You may not be able to get it in the city. It's for tourists and it's because right now it's hard to get a regular Suica card. It's a shortage. Can unused money added to the digital Suica card on the iPhone be refunded at the end of my trip? On the iPhone? I don't know that off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, I don't know if that just stays on there. I, I don't know. Because that's, don't know how that's you connected really to your Apple. Get it refunded. It's, it's actually on your card. so. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we'll, Sorry. We'll, we'll find out. We'll, we'll, I didn't try. I mean, we're not going to be in Japan for a couple of months, but uh, yeah, sorry. When we do find that out, we'll let you, you know. And our strategy is we just load small increments. Unless we know we're going to be on the JR trains like all day and we're going to use quite a bit, then we might put 20,000, oh, am I saying wrong? 2,000, 3,000? Yeah. 2,000 or 3,000 yen, but our default is we just put 1,000 yen, which is less than US $10 on it at a time. So. If we were to <coughs> lose some of that, I mean, it's less than US $10. Right. Okay, flying into Narita, Narita, but won't need to use the pass until later. Is it better to exchange for the pass at the airport, Ueno Station, or Shinjuku Station? I would still exchange it at the airport. Just for the convenience. It's perfectly fine to exchange it somewhere else, but expect waiting in line for a while. So we always pick ours up at yeah. least a day before we plan to activate and use it. But you can be waiting in quite a long Line. So, yeah. do you want to wait yeah. in line at the airport? Do you want to spend part of your other day? Yeah, these other stations in line? you mentioned are crazy busy. Ueno Station is it's crazy, and so is Shinjuku Station. Uh, and, and also, when you pick it up, you don't have to activate it yet. So, you're not going to use exactly. it for a few days. So, you can pick it up in the airport and set the activation date as a future date. You oh. just need to tell them. 
happy. I lost my place. Okay. If I decide to get my IC card on my iPhone, can I pay for it with a credit card or does it have to be with a debit card? There's Either. that Apple Pay yeah. thing. You're going to use Apple Pay on your phone, so whatever you've had connected to that, you can use it. However, we recommend you don't use those at all, and the reason why is there's a very good chance you can be charged a cash advance fee. But then debit card is different. Is that why they're asking debit card? Oh, uh, possibly. I don't know. Um, we didn't try with the however, debit card, I guess. However, you can also use cash at the machines. So, yes, they're all options. Whatever you have connected to your Apple Pay, you can use it. I bought the JR Pass green car. Will I have to deal with the pushers? <laughs> I want to avoid this train. What? The, the, the pushers. Uh, so, uh, If you're concerned about the crowds, that line is definitely going to be shorter. Um, we don't really have any issue with anybody pushing. The only time you're going to have that problem is when you're trying to get on a train at closing time. Like local trains. <laughs> on a local so train at closing time. Bullet trains aren't... People are orderly. The people will be very orderly. It's always been our case. There are um, unreserved cars you could yeah. be trying to... The unreserved cars can certainly you be, you know, when it's, when it's busy, yeah, people are going to try to get on that train. And some people, you know, get clogged in the entryway trying to put their luggage and stuff. So if you were going green car, yes, that is definitely one of the benefits. It's not going to be crowded. It's going to be very orderly. If you're taking a local train, like near last train of the night, it's crazy crowded. Sometimes we just wait for the next train. Like if they're going to be smashing people into the train, <laughs> like <this. laughs> we don't get on that one. Like, or something. sometimes no choice. You're on it and then more people get on. And, and more then people they get, and push like you in more. Pushing the door. Okay, that's mostly local trains. Yeah, local trains. Yeah, that's not going to happen on the machine. If you have a reserved seat in a green car, it's just going to be people waiting for the reserved seats to get in. I am going to Japan this November. My route will be Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo. Flying back home from Tokyo. I also want to go to Gotemba as well. Do you think it is worth the JR Pass? Since that's a one direction trip, it's probably not because it's really when you do the round trip that you get the advantage, right? One direction yeah. is probably cheaper to buy those tickets separately. And then when you go to Gotemba from Tokyo, you can use the Hakone Free Pass. We have a separate video all about that that will get you transportation heading out to Gotemba. Yeah, we're not sure if there's any local trains that's included with the JR Pass that would take you to Gotemba. So. But at that one direction route like that, it's usually mm -hmm. not worth yeah. it for the JR Pass. It kind of has to be a round trip to become financially worth it. Hi guys, an app in particular for accommodations booking other than Airbnb. We also use booking.com. Yeah, we uh, booking.com, we highly recommend booking.com. In fact, that is our main choice these days is to stay in a hotel using booking.com versus Airbnb just for the convenience of it. And we like having breakfast included, so that just makes your day simpler if you can eat at your hotel before you head out. There's a lot of advantages to being in a hotel, like you have your luggage shipped there. It's just, it does make things yeah. easier. I mean, and if you need a phone number too, that's really nice. You can always use your hotel phone number. It's fairly common. Like if you're trying to make reservations and stuff, they ask for your home, for a phone number and chances are you're not going to have one. So the hotel is perfect for that. That's why we prefer hotels. So yeah, booking.com is what we've currently been using. I snagged an exclusive Ryokan in Kawabuchiko in the middle of my 14-day trip. I plan on doing uh, a central Japan trip, Tokyo, as far south as Osaka. Should I get the 14-day JR Pass? It really depends on your travel date. So you need the pass on the days you're going long distance. If you're staying in one city and then going to be traveling for seven days and staying in a city, staying put again, you might be able to get by with a seven day. But if you're going to have travel days, that's even like eight or nine days, then you're going to push over into the 14 day pass. So you really have to look at your specific itinerary. And when you're planning, that's why I say try to plan those long distance travel days, including your return back to where you're flying out of to fall within seven days if you want to save money. Has a ticket machine ever eaten a pass? I would hope they reissue it if it ever happens. We have never had any issue like that happen to us. I've watched some YouTube videos where apparently they didn't pull their ticket back out and so it like ate it and then the attendant came and got it out yeah. for them. Just the process is you insert it, you walk through the gate and you pull it right back out. As long as you do that, I don't think they're, yeah. it's not going to eat your ticket. But if it does happen, get the attendant and they'll help you get yeah. your ticket back. Because when you walk through the gates, there's always these windows on either side with attendants who work there. So it's easy to get somebody's attention and ask them for help. And like if the gate is beeping at you and not letting you through, there's somebody there to help you out.
it's not like the, it's just empty with nobody to help. How busy and crowded does it get between Christmas and New Year's in places like Tokyo, Osaka, and Fukuoka? Any advice on what to do and how to avoid that during the time? So we were in uh, last, last Christmas, we Tokyo, were in Tokyo, we were actually for, for New Year's. And, yeah. it, and it wasn't bad, of, of course. Because there we kind of stayed people. put, you know. Yeah. We didn't try to go around to a lot of things, and people tend to leave the city and go back to their hometowns. Yeah. So like Tokyo might be. It less wasn't nearly crowded. as crowded. Yeah. So most people were like going to shrines and things like that. Yeah, I wouldn't expect all attractions to be open. Like if you're going to be there New Year's Day, I wouldn't expect that you can go to things yeah. and everything to be open. <laughs> so if you want to go to things like shrines, you know, everybody's going to be going to, then, you know, those will be those fine. Those places will be. But yeah. you're trying to go to amusement park or something, you know, double check the calendars and see if stuff's going to be closed. Is it okay to bring a luggage, big luggage inside a local train? We might bump into this kind of situation where we need to bring luggage inside a local train. Yes. Okay, so try not to have too big of luggage. If you have something like a 26 inch suitcase, yes. And normally we, it's hard to describe, but normally you try to stay pretty close to the door entrance of the train. There's kind of like a little wall area. And if you can stick your suitcase right up against that wall, so you're not blocking anybody's way. What you don't want to do is stick it out in the aisle way where people can't get through. So look around real quick, wherever you can move your luggage to be as far out of people's way, not blocking the way for people to get on and off the train. But uh, it does happen because whatever tra whatever luggage you take on the bullet trains, if you then have to transfer to a local train to get your accommodation, you got to take your luggage with you. And those local trains, they have kind of racks to put like a backpack up high or something, but, but they don't luggage. have luggage yeah. racks. Yeah. So just try to be as considerate as you can yeah. with your luggage. So you, you can take it on. Don't worry. You can take it on. It's just that when the train, there's usually three doors. There's one in the middle and two on the sides. Try to enter the one on the side because then you can be farther against the wall too. A little bit of space. Yeah. And don't put it like one time one guy had a suitcase in front of him and the guy across from him had a suitcase in front of him. <laughs> so together they were completely blocking like the walkway. Just don't, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> yeah. And, and also uh, consider the fact that if you have a big piece of luggage, try to avoid the subway. Uh, yes, because there may not be there may not be an a elevator. Convenient elevator yeah, and you may have to walk be... quite a while to find it. So, yeah. Yeah. you All can right. go ahead on Google Maps or NaviTime app and start looking up your routes before your trip to see how you're going to get to your hotel or whatever. I am in Japan for 42 days. Will the JR allow me to purchase both a 21 and 70 pass? Absolutely. As you long as, as you, you have want. them running consecutively, you cannot purchase passes overlapping, which you wouldn't want to anyways. But yes, if you want to pass, purchase a seven day and then the next day have like a 14 day one. Yes, yeah. you can. Yep, absolutely. All right. Where do you get yen? We use the ATM. So we have a whole video dedicated to this is how we manage your money and keep it safe while traveling in Japan. The tips apply to most countries around the world. We personally use our debit card. We withdraw from ATM. We have some tips in that separate video to avoid getting hit with fees when you do that. Okay, um, can you confirm the names of the JR stations? Uh, example, Shin Osaka instead of Osaka station. So if you are in Osaka, and you are riding the Shinkansen, it only stops at Shin Osaka Station. There is an Osaka Station, but it's the bullet trains don't go to it. Yes, so if you're riding the bullet trains, again, Shin Osaka Station. Fukuoka, Osa Osaka. Sorry, Osaka Station is more in the center of the city. Fukuoka, it's called Hakata Station. I mean, there's more stations farther down yeah, too. Yeah, so they're not necessarily the names of the cities. You know, and, and in Tokyo, there's, there's just too many to even name. Yeah, Shinjuku, Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah. What's the other one where sometimes people will be getting on in Tokyo? In Tokyo. So in, in Tokyo, there's like Ueno, uh, it, uh, Tokyo Station, Shinagawa, that and then, you know, and then farther down, it's going to stop at Yokohama. And, and, and by the way, a lot, of, a lot of people, I don't want to go down Strapple, but Yokohama is a separate city. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like Yokohama if you want to do a side trip from Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, another, this question has been asked again, but... Uh, any other discount perks coming with the JR Pass? Hopefully we will get more information on this soon from JR. They are supposed to be releasing this very soon. We're, we're hoping on the first that we'll get more information on that. They're probably still negotiating it with all these places or figuring out what kind of discount they're going to give people. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we better wrap this up. This is getting really long here. If we haven't answered your questions, um, we will we'll get to it. So still please leave it yeah, in please, the comments. Please leave them in the comments below. And um, yes, this video is going to be staying on the channel. And, um, and this is just one in a series, so go back, watch the previous ones. We have so many other JR-related videos. Yeah, and uh, if you're going to be buying your JR Pass, uh, 
trying to take advantage of this price, you know, we, we do highly recommend Kluke. We'll leave our affiliate link in the bottom. We appreciate, you know, if you purchase our link. Understandable if you can't, but. We really appreciate those commissions we earn. And if you're within your 90 day window, just go ahead and buy it Yeah, today. just buy it. The only just people who should be delaying and buying at those last September 28th, 29th, 30th, are the people who are not arriving in Japan until say December 26th, 27th, 28th. So if you're already within your 90 day window, you can go ahead and get it through a travel agent. Thank you so much for everybody who joined us. We hope you have a wonderful trip in Japan and be sure to watch some of our other videos because we cover a lot of topics. We even have a checklist for preparing for your Japan trip that kind of accumulates everything all into one video. Yeah. And um, you know, I just wanna say thanks again to everybody who uh, came and hung out with us today and for all the really nice comments that's, you know, makes us want to do this. This <laughs> is our more. first live, so yeah, we're so, thinking we might start doing them more often. Yeah, so if you're interested in this format, let us know and let us know what you're interested in and, and also, you know, just keep the questions coming so we can make more good content for you and what you're interested in. All our videos, we do read through the comments. We reply to as many of them as we can, so always feel free. We prefer somebody to comment and ask their question on YouTube. If you try to contact us through some other channel, we're a little slow on those channel, other... we might not even yes. check our messages. Yeah. We've so, got three kids. <laughs> We're traveling full time with three kids and right. homeschooling. So comments on our videos are the best way to get your question answered. Yeah, and, and just one more question regarding that. A lot of times people leave questions on a uh, thread in a threaded comment. Like a sub, sub comment comment. If you really want us to see it, put a brand new comment because we will get notified. If you put it like as a sub sub comment under somebody else's comment, those chances are like we'll never even see that you wrote it. Yes. So, I mean, it's not that we're not we trying to avoid it. we haven't gotten back you. to you, that's <laughs> yes. probably the issue is right. that it was a sub -comment. We didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again, everyone. Thank we you. appreciate it. We'll see you guys again soon. Have a wonderful trip. Aloha. Okay, how do you turn off? Two hours.